welcome. This is Monday Night Live from the Cayman Islands with the Power of Teen America podcast crew. And we're just talking all things Power of Teen America, news, updates, current events, roundtable with Julia Williams and special guests. And the special guests that we're expecting this week is, are Laura Estrella, Christine Castro, Sammy DePass, Lane Norton, Khaled Usher, Vin Mangione, um, and many more. And I know that right off the top, the question that everybody's probably going to be asking is, did you fire Mike Gold? And to be honest, the jury is still out. He might be banned from the podcast. And uh, you're going to have to just tune in next Monday Night Live to find out. Um, so, yeah. So, it's Monday, August 7th, 2023. We're live from the Cayman Islands. Uh, and uh, this is Monday Night Live with the Power in America podcast crew. Like I already mentioned, we're talking all things Power in America, updates, current events, news. We've got some huge, big breaking news that if you listen to the Power in America podcast, you're going to hear it here first. But you know we're not going to tell you what it is until the very end of this podcast episode. So you have to stay and watch until the very end. Um, some things that, you know, some, some current events, some current competition events that we want to get out there is don't forget that high school nationals. We opened up registration for that. It's on, it's on our website. It's also linked below in the description. We've also got a logo contest going for that. It, it, that'll be April 19th. 2024 in New Orleans. We've also got bench press nationals has been announced and the registration is open for that. That's January 27, 2024 in Austin, Texas. Also, Power of the America will be hosting our first world championships, the bench press world championships, May 25th in Austin, Texas. So things that we got going on right now, today, tomorrow in the Cayman Islands, we have the North American powerlifting championships. It's the biggest North American powerlifting championships ever. 280 athletes from 14 countries. We've got a huge team with Power of Teen America. We've got 104 athletes competing across all age divisions, both raw and equipped. We've got 17 former world champions on our squad. And you might've heard of some of these people, Ray Williams, Claire Zai, Mike T, Lane Norton, Susie Hartwood, Gary, Steve Mann, Melissa Copeland. I saw Melissa Copeland and Joa Ayanada come in here earlier and they were just like superstars. Like, I mean, they just looked like primed and ready to throw down some massive numbers. I don't think, I think Joe is actually in a battle, but Melissa's not. So um, they're gonna throw down some big numbers. We got Jonathan Garcia and a whole bunch more. Um, there's an article that Julia and Amy Hutchison wrote. It's linked below. It's got all the information that you wanna know about the Power to America squad here at the North American Championships. Um, it's got everything in there. Like it's got the link to the schedule. We'll post links to the live stream in there. We'll keep updating it as the week goes on, um, with links to the live stream, stuff like that. So go ahead and click on that. If you want to know more tomorrow, you're going to be able to see, uh, the international platform return of the legendary Susie Hartwood Gary as a 57 kilo lifter, all the women's classic, uh, we'll have all the women's classic divisions tomorrow from the 47s, 57s, 52s and the 57s. In the open division, we've got Kay Johnson in the 57s in a battle. And uh, we're, I saw Kay come through here earlier. She also looked primed and ready. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see her because uh, she hasn't competed since Classic Open Nationals back in Austin uh, back in February. Um, in, so that's in the morning at 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. We've got all the women's weight classes, like I said, 47s, 52s, 57s. And we got Kay Johnson in the open for us. Um, on the men's side, We've got the fit tomorrow. We've got the 59s, the 66s, and 74s. And there you're going to be able to see Dalton Laco pull some huge deadlift in the 59s. We've got Jonathan Garcia, who is the Silk world silver medalist in South Africa in 2022. We've got also in his weight class with him another 66, Mario Leos. And we've got Nick Ferrison in the 74s, all on the open team. And they will be starting at 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. If you're following power, powerlifting underscore America on Instagram, Obviously, we're here in person. We're going to be posting stories. We're going to be posting little interviews, live behind the scenes coverage all day. We'll post the links to all the different live streams and whatnot. So make sure you're following us there. Make sure you're also subscribe to us here on YouTube as well. Um, the other thing that we want to mention is even though we're in the Cayman Islands and we're here for the North American Power Team Championships, we also don't forget about just in two more weeks from now, starting on August 24th, We've got the sub junior and junior world championships in Romania. You know that we're taking a full stacked squad for Power Team America. And we made a playlist for all things juniors and sub juniors. All the interviews that we've done up to this point 
Did you feel that deadlift? Yeah. <laughs> there are definitely some big deadlifts. We're on the third floor here, so if nothing else, if you want to watch the live stream and watch this whole building collapse as the week goes on, that will be sweet. Um, so yeah, we made a playlist for all things juniors and sub juniors. It's on our YouTube. If you're subscribed to our YouTube, then you'll be able to find that. We'll keep updating it as we do new podcast interviews with the junior and sub juniors going to the World Championships. And don't forget, if you are a fan of the squad, if you want to support Powerlifting America, if you want to show out for the U.S. national team, make sure that you're wearing a Powerlifting America shirt while you're watching these live streams. Get a hat, get something, show your support, go to the store. It's linked below. Buy a shirt or a hat and support the U.S. national teams here in the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands and the, one, the U.S. national team going to Romania in a, in a couple weeks. All right, current events. We've got some huge breaking news. I mean, it's absolutely massive. Uh, you definitely want to hear what it is, but we're not going to tell you until the very end of this. So it might be two hours from now, but uh, you're going to have to listen to the whole thing. So, And we've got some amazing interviews coming up. We've got some guests in the house right now. I'm looking at some superstars in the room uh, from a bunch of different countries that we're friends with. So we'll bring we'll bring them in here in just a minute. But trust me, you're gonna want to hear this breaking news at the end. Um, but we've got a packed show, so we got to get through some some stuff. So we'll get back to that later. We want to let some of these lifters that we're doing interviews with to come in here, so we can get them out of here and then go to bed because they're all competing this week. Um, lifts of the week segment. I'm gonna keep it short. I know I don't know if Julia had anything that she wanted to add. But our boy, Waskar Carpio, the world champion, it, he put up a massive training total this week. He totaled 600 kilos, which if you know that he totaled 625 at Worlds, just what was that, like a month and a half, two months ago at this point. The only difference is he totaled 600 kilo training total this week, but with reps of four and five. So, I mean, he's now repping a 600 kilo training total every week. Um, he said on his Instagram story today, definitely go check him out if you're not following him. It's Lil Waski 59 on Instagram. Um, if you're following us, you, you know everything about Waskar because we repost him all the time. But um, he's said today, now he's really believing that he can get the world record. Uh, and that's the world record that is 669.5. So, I mean, he's on pace for that. The other big lift of the week, you'll see it if you're following PowerStream underscore America on Instagram. It's one of our most recent posts that Eleni sent us. She sent us a collaboration. This is one of the most ridiculous deadlifts that you've ever seen a 57 kilo sub junior. What is she, 16 years old? Yeah, 17, 17 years old. She pulled 402 pounds, 182.5 kilograms, and just like at the top, uh, one of the most epic grinds that you'll ever see. So that was pretty amazing. So definitely follow along for that. All right. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Mention okay. Meg Scanlon. You're 63. So, yeah, so um, we also had Meg Scanlon. I think she, she benched uh, 125 at uh, Worlds, and she just did 120 for a set of five. Yeah, so, I think for like multiple sets of five, too. Yeah, Maybe. and it looked easy. It was, it was yeah, some it looked, of the smoothest benching I've ever seen. It looked super, super easy. All right, so that's all of our news and updates that we have at the top. So let's get right into this. As we mentioned before, we're going to have Laura Estrella from the Dominican Republic, Christine Castro from Canada, Sammy, De Sammy DePass from Jamaica, Lane Norton, the superstar from Powerlifting America, one of the only Americans that will be on this show besides you and me. Uh, we got Khaled Usher from Belize, and then we got Vin Mangione, if we pop him through later. He's the junior national team head coach, junior and sub-junior. Uh, he's one of the U.S. national team coaches. He's the head coach for NAPF, assistant coach for the world championships in Romania. But for now, let's go ahead and bring on our first guest of the night, which is going to be Laura Estrella from the Dominican Republic. I'm going to pull her up here. She is an 84 kilo superstar. Come on, Laura, join us. Don't be shy. Come on over. I'm a, you're going to take my seat. We doing good. I'm going to pop down. Okay. We're going to move this out in between us. All right. I can already see that Christine Castro is over here too, with her new fiance. Uh huh. They're in the house. Khaled's in the house. DJ Khaled from Belize. So, all right, Laura, welcome. Thank you it's for so having good. me. It's so good to see you. We've been hanging out all day. Yeah. What does it feel like here in, in the Cayman Islands? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm just happy to be here. It's. You mentioned it in your last podcast. It is the Friendship Cup. I love coming to NEPF and um, 
now that you mentioned Christine, when, when we saw each other yesterday and we just had this big hug, I was like, I'm so glad I came. came. It's, yeah. it's just the best. I saw you. Uh, I brought in Susie Harvey Gary over to meet you. Is she handling you? Yeah, she's point? handling me. Wow. Yes. Yes. Legendary, legendary. I'm you excited. get the royal treatment. You had Arian handle you last time, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, now you got Susie. Man, you only you have... You gotta go all out. You, you gotta have, go all out. You only have superstar coaches over here. <laughs> so tell us um, the breaking news of the day for the Dominican Republic. Tell us what happened earlier today. You were at the general meeting. Uh, what do they call it? The general assembly? Yeah, the, the general American assembly. Conference. We put in the bid for 2026. We were up against our friends from Belize. Uh -huh. uh, fortunately, we lost by just this point. Both of our presentations were amazing, really. Because I wish I would have been. There it's later. like it's like two amazing delegations, two amazing countries. But um, I'm just glad we put it in. It was like uh, part of our bucket list. So yeah, it was it was pretty amazing to at least present what we're capable of. So, what? Why do you want to host the North American Championships in the Dominican Republic? I think. I know we have a pretty great crew. You've met a couple of us already yeah. from last year in Panama. Yeah. Um, it's grown quite a bit exponentially, actually, especially after we started competing internationally. Uh, I was just mentioning earlier in the warm up room last year was the first time we were able to uh, a, give award medals in the female division by weight class. This year was the first time we were able to do it in the Masters Open and Juniors. We have multiple junior divisions, which is great for a sport that uh, has only been around for like seven or eight years in the Dominican Republic. And we've only been participating internationally for like the past three years. So yeah, so that's... Monster sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Single-handedly keeping you afloot. That they should sponsor probably. We drink enough of it. So give us, give us the pitch for why the Dominican Republic should be hosting the North American Power Championship. What was, give us a, like a little summary pitch of what you said today to try to convince everyone, because you must have done a good job. It came down to one vote. Yeah, it came down to one vote. First, I think the location is pretty obvious. Uh, I, it's uh, obviously when we go to these places, we want to uh, have a great time, not only lifting and competing and make sure we have um, right the right setup but also it's a wonderful place, not only to get away, there's a lot of stuff to do. And um, we want to try to really expose most, most of what the Caribbean has to offer. We know that usually these kind of competitions are repetitively, repetitively in the same places. So we just want to show what, what we can offer. And in regards to the community, I made a lot of focus and emphasis in regards to like what the community can offer. Um, we, we worked really hard to really educate ourselves to really, um, not only nationally, like especially nationally to really set ourselves to the highest standard. Like we talk about being IPF standard. Mm -hmm. Not not for there to be like this gap between what you can do at a national level and like, let's say, regional world level. Like we expect world level lifting in regards to like um, uh, technique and all that stuff. Your and standards. Yeah, my sta our standards in general. So we have a great community of kids. Like, uh, like I said, we had like a 30% increase just in the juniors, like a 40% increase in, in total membership from last year to this year so wow. we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of growth so i think that's basically in summary what julia said. julia do you have any follow-up questions on that yeah um have you looked at i guess some of the other countries that have grown rapidly um and kind of seen what they've been doing have you taken cues from any of them you know like france yeah yeah it's a lot from you guys we talk a lot in mm -hmm. regards to what you guys are doing in regards to social media. So you even go to our Instagram and there's been many times that I'm like, Paul, what do you think of this? Or did you like that? Yes. And um, so we really, um, we really try to look for feedback in, in that sense. Um, we look up a lot uh, to the CPU in, in regards to like how their organization and how they um, have these regional meets, like for example, they have these provincials and one of our goals is to have like um, our island, our half island is divided in like the northeast and south. So we want to implement that kind of like 
regional as well to give um, also more opportunities uh, for growth. Um, but additionally to that, I think the wonderful thing about the NAPS region is like, for example, with Belize, we're in constant uh, contact and like, oh, I got this for this meet or you here's a sale for this. And oh, we made uh, like, for example, with Puerto Rico as well, like equipment. They give us like diagrams on how we can make home make locally made equipment and not have to import it. So wow. yeah, the constant communication is like the key to growth in regards to all of this. Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on here. So I mean, Laura is so humble. Basically, she's not the president. What's your actual position? I'm the Secretary General. Secretary General. Yeah. Okay. And now, did that change recently, or was that also the case last year? Yeah, no, that's okay, the case gotcha. last year. Because yeah. I always call you the president. Because it seems like you're running it down there. <laughs> I don't see anyone else, but I see you everywhere. No, there's everything. a lot in the back office. There's a lot, a lot yeah. going on. But the thing is, I think I'm good. I will admit that I think I'm good with people. Mm -hmm. So the guys are like, go, 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 you, you, you yeah. do that. Go deal with the people. I always say you're the de facto president. <laughs> I don't know. No offense to the actual no, president. No, I don't know who president. No, yeah, I, go, go does, he, he does all the hard work. Yeah, yeah. So no offense. Uh, but what do you see as being like the biggest challenge to growing the sport in the Dominican Republic? Um, I think it's, it's where I'm at in my lifting career versus since we have this peak, like a, a lot of it has to do it has to do a lot with like the education mm -hmm. and like a, what are you observing like social media is great but it can also be bad in regards to like the proper growth into it like mm -hmm. right you see things and people think they automatically goes like oh i want to be great so i'm going to do what so and so is doing mm -hmm. or they don't they don't understand that really this is a sport it's not just going in the gym and hit, hitting heavy weights that like it comes to a point that you have to make se several investments you have to really take your time recovery and all that so since I think because also because of my age, when we go back and we present this to the younger lifters and try to educate them, they're like, ah, nah, mm. you know? So we've been, we made a, a lot of emphasis when we notice that feedback. So we hold like powerlifting 101 seminars. We have brought down like, for example, Jason, who's my coach from the strength guys. We've had Isabella von Weisenberg down there. Wow. Like we've had a lot of people come down and really provide like educational seminars. So it's not like, oh, it's just loud us saying it. It's like, oh, these people who have done it for years and at an elite level come down and teach me. And also they're learning something and they're going back home and applying it. And it, it, in the end, it comes full circle because it just helps the federation grow. Wow, that's that's great. Yeah. Um, do you? How is power thing? Is it is it like a really popular sport in the Dominican Republic? I mean, is it, I mean, like, are people seeing it? Yeah, like, like nationally. No, yeah, people are seeing it. Like, I don't train in a commercial gym, but uh, when I go to these commercial gyms, they're like. Oh, you're louder. You're a power lifter, which is awkward for me. But like, um, or they see me training a certain way and they're like, oh, you're a power lifter. Because since we've had this spike of like junior lifters and even masters lifters that go to these commercial gyms, that there people are now like more familiar with, yeah. with the sport and, and more people like one, the other day I went to the mall to buy a book. And she's like, oh, I went to the national to so see my cousin. I saw you wow. live. So it's like, oh, this powerlifting thing is really You're cool. Recognized. Yeah, exactly. So people are now identifying this sport. Do you think, I mean, does it resonate more with women or men? What's the dynamic around that issue? So uh, coming from a Latin-based country, we still have that um, weird feedback in regards to like getting girls into the sport. But I, uh, with the growth that we've had uh, with girls, and and it, also this is the positive side of social media, right? Mm -hmm. This the stigma is rubbing off, mm -hmm. especially since there's more like commercial fitness girls that are doing like squat, bench, deadlift, even though they're not powerlifters. So I would say right now, in regards to membership, it's like 30, 70. Okay. But I do believe in a couple of years it will even out. Like I said just the other day, we were able to like not metal by coefficient but mm -hmm. metal by weight category that's all that's okay. yeah so so just that so like for example just like a few months ago this girl is just like oh i saw that i can lift as a 63 sub junior can i do it and i'm like of course you can mm -hmm. so like even younger girls are not getting an interest so hopefully i hope in like five years I'm, that's my personal goal like we're happy but so cool. one step at a time
Yeah, absolutely. Julia, do you have any follow up questions or any other questions? No, I guess, you know, a lot has been happening in the world of powerlifting yeah. lately. Um, you know, we have Sheffield and Worlds. So I guess, what was your reaction to Sheffield? What do you think of that? And, you know, what, who is your favorite lifter in Worlds? <sighs> That's okay. Two um, questions. Sheffield, I think, is an amazing initiative because. Personally, I always think that like as an organization, we have to spice things up. Like that's something we do. Like like the lights we have behind us, we yeah. lift like this. Mm -hmm. We do. You've seen yeah, the videos. You guys we make it look really good. create an ambiance. Like, and I have to cre give credit to that. Like some of uh, my boys back home, they're the ones who like Abraham and David are the ones that are always like insisting on doing those kind of things, and they really spice a, a so. I liked it because it, it gave it the show factor. So it really brings in the common common folk to like uh, come in and really want to watch it. And obviously it's an additional incentive to those like elite athletes who give everything to be there, right? Mm -hmm. And what was your second question? Who was my favorite at yeah. Worlds? Yeah, or Sheffield, you know, who's your favorite? Oh my God, I have so wait, wait. many. Who's your favorite powerlifting in America lifter? <laughs> let's bring it back, let's bring it back to the home team here. Don't forget. You should have prepared. We're on the power of Team America. But come on, there's an obvious answer. Who your favorite lifter is? We already mentioned him on this episode earlier. Waska? Yeah. I mean, of course, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, of course, Waska is one of my favorites. Hometown boy, right? He's a hometown boy. Yeah. Is that I go automatically to female when you guys? I know. Ask so, me that so question? who's exactly? So who, who's your favorite female then? On the on PA, yeah. there's so many. I admire so many of them. Um, I would say Megan Scallion is up there. I've always admired her perseverance, especially after she had her babies. Um, I've a Jess, Jessica Espinal. Mm -hmm. She's my teammate. She's my TSG teammate. Um, uh, I think she did so amazing, and people are, I yeah, I feel like people are undermining her potential. I really do feel like people are undermining what she can do. Um, I have so many. Like, really, I just, like... You like I, them all, it sounds like. You guys have a great team. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's all I was looking for. <laughs> I was just looking for a little soundbite that we can play later. I am, But I do have to give a shout-out to, like, one of my favorite Masters lifters. Who's that? LS. LS McLean. Yeah. He'll be here. Panama Poppy last year. Panama right? Poppy. He's going to be Cayman Poppy or Cayman something Poppy. something else this year. Um, yeah, he mentioned you on the podcast uh, when we had him on. And um, he's yeah. going to be here soon. I think he comes in on Wednesday. Oh, cool. So it'll be like a little reunion. Yeah. Because we got to hang out, you and me and him, last year. Yeah, we had yeah. burgers at, the, yeah. at that place in Panama. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, so, yeah, what else? So I know another thing that you're big on is women's sports. Yeah. Huge. You've been talking a lot about what's been going on with the World Cup. Yep. What has been going on for the Dominican? Because as you know, the U.S., we're out. Yeah. We're done. So yeah. what, I'm going to start rooting for... The DR is not in it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sure. Female, female uh, football is... Uh, football is growing in the DR. Okay. And like our junior teams, they have classified in, in different tournaments. Mm -hmm. They're not in the World Cup. What's huge in the DR is obviously baseball for the men. Yeah. I think that's pretty obvious. But for the females, they, um, volleyball. So I'm, I'm okay. in regards to like female sports, I'm, I'm a huge fan of our um, volleyball team. We're called the Caribbean Queens. Okay. And we usually fight that title with Cuba and Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. So um, in regards to like local sports, female sports, I, I, volleyball is huge for me. And what was it that you posted the other day? Someone, some jerseys being sold, more jerseys sold than than the women jerseys than than any yeah. event. Yeah, it was like this Brazilian lifter. The video you the Brazilian yeah, 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 uh, yeah. soccer. Yeah, and and I posted that video because it resonated with me so much, and um, because people always want to use the excuse of like, well, women's sports would just grow if a you would you would support it and you would make it interesting, and mm -hmm. I'm just like. It is really interesting. You just the if they go back and forth, it's like oh, they invest more money in the men in the males because it's it, it gives more greater net revenue. And I'm mm -hmm. like, but if you invest in the female sport, you don't you don't know you haven't experimented with that. 
it obviously grows because you're investing money in the other, but if you would invest money in the female sport, it could grow just as much, right? Mm -hmm. So in this cat, uh, uh, I forget her name, but um, this is like a long time female uh, Brazilian soccer player. And she was saying like, I didn't have a role model. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anybody to look up to. And now I walk down the street and people recognize me and, and they say, oh, my son loves you. But why? Because you guys have exposed my games to all these people. Yeah. Because these people can easily see me um, and playing on the field and obviously for, and for me it might sound like when people say that it, it sounds ridiculous because in our sport mm -hmm. people watch all, both sides equally yeah actually i have friends that prefer watching the females yeah. Yeah. Than, than the males but like everybody watches equally no matter who's lifting it's like oh who's lifting so it's like, okay i'm gonna go watch yeah. it it's it's not like oh it's the girls i don't care about it exactly it's so, one yeah. of the cool things about powerlifting is that we're on the same platform exactly same number of weight classes yeah. same number of medals everything like that yeah. so and and i know the the breakdown of men to women at worlds was there was only like a 30 lifter difference it was like one, yeah, eight, one you 80, guys talked about it 180 to yeah, 160 yeah. something like that yeah, yeah. it's really really good yeah. So, okay, one last pitch. Let's keep the PR going, the PR train for the DR, the DR. to host the North American Gym. So what, as far as it being a vacation destination, you mentioned before, you just glossed over that it's just obvious, but tell us, is it a, like, should people just be taking vacations to Dominican Republic? Like from we the have, oh, I'm sorry, I cut yeah, you yeah, yeah, no. there. We have been, and, and I said it at the, at the meeting today, is like, yeah. I know this is gonna be controversial, but, uh, Dominican Republic constantly is awarded the best place to vacation in the Caribbean. Wow. Like, yeah, obviously all the Caribbean is beautiful. Like it, the, we, we have just amazing people, but specifically for the DR, I think it's that diversity that we have in regards to what you can find geograph geographically. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about Punta Cana. Yeah. Like for us, it's like, ah, oh, fine, the result, Punta Cana. Yeah, Punta right. Cana is wonderful. That's yes, what I you, always sh hear about. you should go. But like, there is so much to offer in the South, like in regards to like beautiful beaches, desert-like beaches. In, in Mid-Island, we have the highest peak of the Caribbean that you can hike up to and wow. like you can camp out there. Um, there's a lot of like beautiful valleys and like, um, a, we also have like underwater a, um, lakes and lagoons that you can swim in and with resorts and up north we have like this combination of like forest and beach kind of thing so the resorts there are like Every time I go, I'm like, I can't believe I live here because I have like a mountain to my right and then I have this forest to my left and then behind I have like this beautiful beach in Samana. Mm -hmm. So like there's so much diversity and so much to do. And the people, I think, again, I bring it up. You've met... We always You're have amazing, a amazing, yeah. You know, <laughs> but we always have a smile on our face. Exactly. And I think that that highly represents what Dominicans are, right? No matter yeah. how hard life gets, like we'll we'll get through it with a smile on our face. So everybody will greet you. Everybody will, will just be excited for for you to give our country an opportunity. Okay, yes. I'm sold. I'm gonna take my next vacation in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Now, um, one last thing is, tell us a little bit about the Dominican team that's here. Yeah. And also your own training and how things are going for you because you're competing in just a few days as well. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Um, we have a smaller team this year. Okay. Uh, we hope we're going to bring a bigger team uh, to Arizona. What happened? Why was it smaller? Um, because it was big in Panama. Yeah, it was big. We had a big team, pretty good team. A lot of medals last year we, we got. Um, Did you guys win the Classic on one side? or We won the Classic, like, I think it was a two okay. category, two men. Uh, we got, like, three or four silver medals, and I think we got one or two bronze. I think you won the team points on one side. We on got, the like, men's. on the men's, we got, like, third place, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but we were out there, and I found out like six months after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you had to leave. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, we have uh, it was just life. A lot of uh, a lot of the guys got engaged. They're buying houses mm -hmm. and they're just getting their weddings together. Mm -hmm. A couple people like uh, are, they just had like life stuff going on, and okay. and they're all like FOMO. They're responding oh, now all they of my story like FOMO, FOMO. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, but yeah, I still we still have a pretty great team this year. We have tomorrow morning first thing we have Jenny Espinal. She's our Masters one lifter, uh, in the fifty sevens. On um, Wednesday we have Leonardo Jimenez. This is his second international. He's doing. He went up a weight class doing juniors eighty threes. Okay. Um, and his training has been 
they've both been looking really, really strong. I'm, I'm hoping to see good things from them. And then on Thursday at the same session I'm going is Sara Peña. This is her first experience. She just started lifting this year. Okay. And cool. yeah, and she's she, already in an international competition. Yeah, she's an 84 plus junior with a lot of growth. She's only 19. Uh, so Whoa. I think it's going to be a great experience for her. And uh, myself, 84s, alongside with my friend Sammy and mm -hmm. Christine. Yeah, they're both sitting over <laughs> I'm here. so excited that I'm in the same session with them. But training has been great. Um, I've been with Jason for like over five years. So. Um, I trust the process, mm -hmm. um, and I'm very excited for having Susie. I'm gonna get some at? pictures. I'm gonna get some pictures because these two in the background over here are, <laughs> are doing their thing. They're like hugging it out over here. Yeah. They're about to go head to head. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your training's been going good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you gonna hit I hope so. That's that's okay. the plan. That's the plan. All I. Right. Yeah, last year was my first meet as an 84. This is the second time internationally as an 84. Awesome. So just going up from here so yeah. yeah well speaking of badass women um i don't know if you noticed that leah babwa just poked, poked her head in here just a little bit ago i said hi to her yeah yeah so that's yeah really that's sweet, cool huh? that she's here yeah i know her and ben escrow i just saw them yeah, so yeah. like that is so sick i mean this is a cool meet man we got superstars it's, here it's more amazing than i thought it would yeah would be. so yeah all right well laura thank you Thanks so much for, for joining me. us yes we'll get you out of here you can go rest. Yes. <laughs> um, have a good competition. We'll obviously, we'll be seeing you around. Yes, of course. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, Laura. All right. That was Laura. She's Laura Estrella. She is basically the queen of the Dominican Republic when it comes to powerlifting. She's basically the Amanda Lawrence of, of the Dominican yes. Republic when it comes to powerlifting. She gets recognized in the streets of the DR. So, all right. And the next person up is going to be Christine Castro. Bring yourself up here, Christine. So we got Team Canada, our bitter rivals at the <laughs> North American Championships. They're always trying to steal. I think you guys won. Did you guys like sweep last year? Um, what did you do? We swept for sure the Women's Open. Uh -huh. um, we swept a few divisions. The one I wanted to get was the Male Open, but we didn't have enough of a team. Who who won it? Um, I don't. I don't think it was us. I don't think. I think we got like second in one thing. Only. Are we sure? I think we got men's. Did we get the men's? I don't think so. No, I don't think we won anything. Okay, anyway, we'll have to look up the history. But I thought you would know because you're basically like the team coach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you the head coach of this team? Um, this year, uh, I didn't opt in to be a head coach because they said that if I want to be a head coach, I can't compete. So then I was like, I don't want to oh. compete. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're an like, assistant coach? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do both. Um, okay. But this year, our goal is to get the open mail as well. Okay. Because... Last year, not getting that, yeah. that really made me want it. But I'm not sure if you've seen the male, the male open team this year from Canada. It's I've like, seen yeah. it. I've seen oh, it. It's yeah. pretty good. But have you seen the American team? We got some, we got we're bitter rivals now. We're, we're going we're gonna to take you guys down this year. I think you guys won the most amount of yeah. medals and everything last year. Yeah. 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 We're you, just kicked, you kicked our ass. You kicked our ass. Yeah. But you're so nice about it. You're so, such good sports about, so it. about it. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about your squad that you have here. Yes. So right now our male team is very stacked, but our female mm -hmm. team is also very stacked. Um, we have almost two females in every, like in a few weight classes, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but they're all like, for example, like we have 69 kilos. We have um, Shannon like projected to be first and then mm -hmm. we have Julie projected second, which is crazy because I'm like, even having those two females just already the two yeah. nominations for Canada, that's a huge win for us already. Um, and I know they're going to do great. And then for male, we have people like Bryce Quatrick, Eric Willis. Oh, I've heard of them. hard hitters. I've yeah, heard of them. So a little crazy. Um, but it's nice because I feel like one thing that NAPF was missing was uh, people didn't know how great NAPF was. And I feel like it wasn't as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. But Definitely this year is huge because I'm even seeing the people that applied for this year and it got pretty competitive in our country too for people who actually to got, make it. Yeah. 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 Same with us. Same yeah. with us. And it's only getting more competitive on our side for sure. Yeah, I noticed because then I was like, whoa, it's yeah. this NAPF is gonna be huge. There's huge hitters in both in a lot of different countries. And then so it's gonna be cool to see how places are gonna go. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit like um, Laura was just talking about how 
this and, and Robert Keller mentioned it on our last Monday Night Live that mm -hmm. this is like a friendship cup. And even though we're like super bitter rivals and we hate each other, <laughs> what what is it like? What's the vibe like here at NFP? And why do you think the North American Championship is like such an important competition? Because I know you've been coming to this for a while. Yes. How many times have you competed? Um, I think this is my fifth time. Your fifth time. Yeah. So you're an OG of the yeah, NFP. Um, I'm like a newcomer compared to you. <laughs> but why is it? Why do you keep coming to this meet? Why is it so important? So I've been to both worlds and NEPF. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did worlds just recently. Yeah, in Malta, yeah. And one thing I know is that uh, the vibe that I get from worlds and NEPF, they're very different. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. And what I get from NEPF is everyone is so welcoming and you know that you're going to see very similar faces. Um, it's very hard to see like some of those people because it's very it's not accessible for them to go to europe mm -hmm. and it's very hard for them like that distance is, is very far for them so them coming to NEPF, you see those people that you don't get to see in the world yeah. and that was that was huge because the thing is that like there's a lot of people here that i love seeing like laura yeah like sammy i'm seeing sammy like sammy went to worlds and that she, was really she cool like, yeah. she's sitting right over here off camera yeah. by the way she's just glaring <laughs> at her seat just daggers, <laughs> staring daggers over here. They're such bitter rivals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys are lucky Claire's not here. We would have a full on fight in here. But yeah, I know. The three meanest ladies in all of powerlifting. But, um, best session. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be the best Laura, be the best Laura best shouted from the crowd that this is going to be the, one of the best, the best sessions she's saying. Definitely. 76. All three of us? 76 yeah. and Yes. And which one? And we're all together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all together. Oh, so you're talking session. Okay, yeah, because yes. the 84s. 76s, 84s, going to be wow. so great. Wow, it's all in one gonna session. be a session to watch. We got our young yeah. superstar Luella Bowden in there with you. Yes. I'm so excited for her to be on the same platform as you ladies. Because mm -hmm. um, she's a sub-junior, you know, and she'll yes. be out there with Claire and you, you ladies. is going to be awesome. Such a good experience. I love having a sub-juniors. I think for female sports, I definitely think that... Back then, there wasn't as much sub juniors and juniors, and now seeing mm -hmm. an increase in that, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, so even seeing the nominations and seeing how many juniors and juniors there are, mm -hmm. uh, sub juniors and juniors, it was it was crazy. Yeah, so, it's a full team, mm -hmm. and you guys are bringing a full team, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely a lot more people this year. Than even it was. we have um, we have more people in the clip. Um, Simone, she's usually she competes classic, oh. but she started getting into equip, and so now she's doing an equip meet. So which is she's crazy. doing this? Yeah. Wow, I didn't even realize yeah, that. Oh, you got crazy. some stars. You're yes. bringing out some stars on your yeah. team. So that's why it's it's really exciting because then uh, now people are, are there's more females coming in, and there's also more people in equip coming in, and then so all the divisions are kind of getting a little bit more covered. Whereas before, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to fill those spots. For sure. And I know Capri's here too. Yes. Right? Like he's basically like a world. He's always at worlds. Yes. He's yeah. going to pull something crazy. I don't even, yeah. We were just talking about how we've never seen him really struggle, mm -hmm. which is all crazy. Because in powerlifting, I feel like that's. He just takes all RPA. Yeah. He just, yeah. At <laughs> he's doing RPA eight singles. Yeah. It's crazy. Julia, do you have any questions for Christine? Yeah. So I know you saw the worlds, and I know um, just. I guess talk about what the super heavyweight uh, title means in yes. Canada. Yeah. How big yeah. of a deal is that? Is that um, Can Brittany Schlater even like walk down the street in Canada now? <laughs> Whew, she is. So what's crazy is that I was actually there at Brittany Schlater's first meet when wow. she was just starting out. And just from that first meet, I already knew she was going to be one of our strongest lifters. Wow. And it's crazy seeing her growth now in the sport because um, not only is she involved in powerlifting and is really successful in it, winning, winning world championships, but she's also very involved in the CPU, which is the, the Canadian Powerlifting Union, and then uh, even our provincial one. She's mm -hmm. also in that with me, so the, which is crazy because she gives back to the sport, but she also is uh, such a great representative because of that. And so I, I love that. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm very excited for her to go to Sheffield. I yeah. definitely think that it was, she She worked so hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Did she, I'm very happy. <laughs> she was just one of the nicest people meeting her in the warm-up room. I mean, I was a fan of her from the last time she won the World Championship. Yeah. But then meeting her and i follow her on instagram and stuff and she just seems like one of the nicest people yes. but then meeting her in person she really lived up to it yeah. i mean she took time out she was always smiling she was shaking hands um and everything and giving hugs out to everyone like uh, she went and hugged sonita afterwards and everything yes. 
and they had words and everything and it was just it was a beautiful sight to see for sure mm -hmm. i agree no she's and it's crazy because she's always like that so then you see her at meets very friendly always welcoming always willing to help and so i i think that in powerlifting sometimes you come across some lifters that are very just uh they're only there to lift and then yeah. you come across lifters where they're there for the whole community and Brittany is, is just that she's one so, of those yeah that's great. Um, Julie, do you have any follow-up? Any other questions for Christine? Yeah, so... Talk into the mic. Like there we you. said, like, like we uh, talked about earlier, you have a big battle ahead of you. Um, so what are you... How do you feel going into the going into this meet? Um, I'm very excited because I'm actually... I'm moving up from 69 kilos. Yeah. Um, I... It was always hard for me to cut to 69 kilos mm -hmm. and then so because i used to compete in 72 kilos yeah so then when they got rid of that weight class it was hard for me to just and you know in powerlifting every kilo of your body weight yeah it does affect your performance and so for me it's really cool knowing that hey you know what i'm just gonna move up see what i can do and so this is actually gonna be my first meet where i'm officially just committing to 76 kilos and it's okay. really cool because uh competing against claire and sammy that's definitely going to be uh a very cool intro into 76 kilos you know oh because you just did malta at 69 yes yeah, oh, wow yeah. so was that cut tough in malta um that was definitely harder than last year when i did napf last mm -hmm. year napf i did 69 kilos but it was an easier cut whereas this time around uh, I already, I, I do my measurements all the time. And then even finding out the measurements of my quads and then comparing it to last year, yeah. I already knew, like, oh, we're in a little bit of trouble here. So um, I spit up two liters. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. It's, to get I, down? It was, wow. it was crazy. You know, powerlifters do crazy things, but I didn't think I could do that. But I, you did it. <laughs> I was like, I am not missing weight at Worlds. So. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. I mean, I've spit like, one bottle of water, yeah. like one small bottle of water, <laughs> and that was a struggle. So yes. I can't even imagine. Oh, spinning. it was crazy. I think it took it took me a few hours. I think it took me four hours, five hours of spinning. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Carlos did it crazy. <laughs> so, how has your prep been then? Now that you've been eating into this, are oh, your numbers just blowing up? It's it's really nice because I think one thing I noticed is bench definitely feels much better. Yeah. Because of the extra weight, uh, squats feel great because I have that extra cushion. Yeah. My, uh, my belt's a little tighter. Yeah. Feels really good. Um, deadlift same thing. So then that's why I'm excited to see where I'm at strength wise, like competing in this weight class, and then I'm excited to kind of do this weight class for like the following weeks. So. Because, so you're currently, you're nominated in third with a 467. And yes. we've got Sammy, who's in the room here at a 513, but we know those are sandbag numbers. Yes. She's trying to pull something over on us. Yes. Um, and we got Claire at 507, but you've done 503 before. Yes. So do you think now that you're moving fully and committing to 76, that you're going to be able to push that number at this competition? Or do you think it'll take some time? Uh, honestly, I'm not really sure. Just because I feel like with meets, uh, there's numbers you can hit in the gym. And then you go on the platform and you kind of realize, like, hey, you know what? I need to try to kind of play it by ear and see what mm -hmm. the day gets. I definitely will try to give it like whatever I have that day. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going into this competition uh, not peaked because I'm actually competing in a yeah. few weeks. Um, oh, where? Yes. Uh, so we have our regionals in Canada. Oh. Um, it's our last qualifier for Worlds team next year. Oh, geez. So, yeah. So then that's why I have to. You guys are on it early. Yes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So then that's why I was like, okay, you know what? I'll just go into this meet, try like whatever I can, try to get like a, the highest places placing I can get without trying to um, sacrifice my recovery for the meet that I'm doing like in a little, in a few weeks. So. Okay, I see Sammy's yeah. like looking very close. She wants to know exactly what the strategy is. <laughs> she wants to know what the game plan is. Um, but do you think that, because I remember at this competition last year, yes. You were like a very intense coach. Yes. Like yes. you are screaming yes. at the top of your lungs, like like ah oh, 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 like you're like screaming at the top of your lungs. Yeah. Do you think that coaching, like, is that is that the priority when you're here? Yes. Do you put yourself second behind coaching the team? Always. And you think it affects you? Um, to be honest, I feel like uh, prioritizing the athletes 
don't really affect my performance that much. Okay. Um, it can in a way, um, but I'm so used to very stressful situations like that. Mm -hmm. And to me, I feel like coaching, especially because I have some of my own athletes mm -hmm. competing in this competition, it's a lot more rewarding than my competition. Yeah. So then it's, it's definitely a different feeling, but at the same time, I, I feel like it is possible to balance both. But it does help that I'm not cutting, so that's nice. <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't see how, I mean, you, your adrenaline must be just yes. really high um, throughout the competition. Mm -hmm. And so I would feel like you'll be drained by the time your day comes. Yes, yeah. But you're not, because no. you're an animal. You just need some caffeine, all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, other questions we wanted to ask you. Yes. Um, so just give us, give us like the little bit of a rundown about these competitors. So you're the reigning North American champion. Yes. Are these other ladies privileged to be on the same platform as you? Oh, as the reigning North course. American champion. And my privilege are to you share the raising, platform are you with raising Sammy. The standard for them? And what does it feel like? I mean, going head to head with another reigning yeah. North American champion in Sammy the Pats. Not to mention Claire in the mix. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm I'm gonna try to beat her. <laughs> she's look. She's right over here. I'm trying my best. To Daggers. Beat her. She got best lift through ladder and she got second best. Yeah. Oh, Christine yeah. got best lift. That's right. Laura has the facts. Laura should be co-host. <laughs> Laura should be co-host of this. Um, yeah. So, are you gonna try to you know claim um, that title again or or what? You know I. When I got best overall last year, I wasn't even looking at the numbers. I was just there thinking like, hey, let's just do what we can this day, what we like, what we have on the day. Because the day before I was actually coaching. So then I was yeah, I know. Tired. You were coaching like every yeah. day. Yeah. And then uh, I was really tired. And then so I was like, you know what? I'll just have two scoops of pre-workout. <laughs> See what I can do that day. If the bar feels heavy, the bar feels heavy. But I think the overall was just the bonus. And... I definitely think even at that meet, Sammy wasn't really like at her peak yet because even seeing her performance at Worlds, yeah, um, she was it was she was on fire and it was yeah. kind of crazy to see how competitive she was compared to everybody else there in the seventy six kilo class, considering that Jamaica hasn't been to Worlds yet. Yeah, so I think that definitely put Jamaica on the map. Thank you, Sammy. Big time. <laughs> put North America on the map. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So that was really cool. And I think uh, it'll be fun to compete against Claire and Savvy for sure. Yeah. Um, I think the 76 kilo class is very, uh, even internationally, it's getting crazy. Cause, oh my uh, God. It's so crazy at, at Worlds. Oh my it's, Carlina, it's insanity. It's insanity. Yes. It was, it was crazy because even watching that in person, I made sure I had front seat. Yeah. And watching that in person, that was, that was crazy. It was and I definitely think that when Sammy comes back to Worlds, uh, she's gonna be in that uh, in that uh, stack 76 kilo like yeah. group A class, so. For sure, for sure. Okay, last question, we'll keep it quick and we'll get you out of here. And um, just for people that are listening, Lane Norton is in the building and I promise him that he needs to go to bed, he's tired. <laughs> so we're gonna pop him, we're gonna pop him in. What did he say? So oh, he's, he's the only master in the room. He needs to go to bed. All right. Um, That's true. So we're gonna pop him in here next. But um, who's your favorite American lifter? American lifter, no I would say. Uh, <laughs> what do you say, Lane? He's like no pressure. No pressure. Lane, Lane is staring at her, saying no pressure. And why is it Lane Norton? I love the carbon. <laughs> Um, definitely, uh, so Jonathan Keiko is one of my yeah, good friends, yeah, and, um, he's the man. I was, like, I was, I talked to him about, uh, games all the time, mm -hmm. so we were playing Maple Story, so we talked about that. Uh, they just got engaged recently in Menina, so that yeah. was, that was really cool, but he's one of my top lifters, not only because he's very strong, but he's also so humble, and I think that's one thing that not a lot of powerlifters have. And mm -hmm. so it's really cool to see yeah. that you can have that balance of both. Same thing with Brit, so then um, yeah. Rich later. So I think that's really cool for a powerlifter to have. And uh, Dana from 
US 76. Dana McNeil. Yeah. I've been watching her forever. So yeah. it's, it's really cool that I've seen her in person, see her compete. And she's so calm. It's oh, crazy. She's, she's just, just so chill. Yeah. Although, actually, I think that she was quietly very nervous in Malta. Oh, okay. She was yeah. quietly very nervous. It's so hard to tell. Yeah. She yeah. looks so Her calm exterior is calm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Lane Norton's really great. Yeah, Lane Norton, he's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> One master skills. Get that cash ready on the way out here. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Transition here. Yeah. But, um, okay, the last thing I just want to say also, congratulations to you and Quinn. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I think, did he propose to you or did you propose to him? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, did you guys agree? Did you guys just mutually agree, like in advance, exactly. that this was happening? It's time. You know, I don't know if he did that because I was, uh, so at Worlds, I was very sick, so that I didn't have the best performance. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if he was proposing to me to so, like, make me feel better. Wow. And I was like, I hope this is real. But wow. that definitely made me feel better. I forgot about the <laughs> beat. I remember, I remember coming up to you and saying congrats, and you're like, did I win something? <laughs> you're like, did I win? I was like, which one? Only the best man in the world. Yeah. 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 Like, come on. She was, she was like, congrats for what? Like, like nothing, nothing happened. What happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, was, she was like, did I make the podium? And I yeah. just didn't notice. Yeah. Like, like, did you I get made the medal? podium in life. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Life PR. Yes. Life PR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. So you two are, you two of the people that just make this competition so special. It's so fun Aww. to see you. You two, Laura, Ellis McLean, Khalid, everyone that's in the room basically right now. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's so cool to see you. So, all right, we'll let you get out, get up on out of here. I know you're going to have a super long week. You're probably coaching first thing oh, in the morning. Oh, yes. Already so, got yeah. my energy drinks ready. All right. So, I yeah. <laughs> so, hey, stay. Don't get in a fight with Sammy. She's already given eyes over here. I'll try. On the way out. Yeah. Quentin, keep, stay in between them, okay? <laughs> keep them apart. Keep them apart. Um, but yeah, we're going to, Sammy, we're going to have to let Lane pop in here and we'll come to you next. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And everybody, make sure you tune in to watch one of the most epic battles. All right. We were just having a really deep conversation about Lane Norton's hair. He has amazing <laughs> hair. He's not wearing that hat. I just like hats. He's not wearing the hat to, to hide some some baldness or anything like that. The just, Warhawk in full effect here. <laughs> just FYI. Um, so Lane. Thank you for joining us. I know it's past your bedtime. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, you just got in today, so, so you're tired, I know. I promise we'll keep this short. But um, how are you feeling coming into this? Like crap, actually. Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you posted about it publicly a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it just happens. Like, you know, getting, it's like, uh, you know, they always joke about, or not joke about, but you talk to MMA fighters. What do you have to do to get ready for a fight? You got to fight. Yeah. What do you got to do to get ready for lifting heavy weights? Gotta lift heavy weights. What happens when you lift heavy weights? Get dinged up sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, I was uh, training was going pretty well. Um, it was I was actually getting up to like the most volume on squats that I had done in probably four or five years. Um, and then kind of two weeks out, I was feeling a little yeah, lower back was feeling eh. mm -hmm. and uh, I you know some days you go I think I can hit it and it won't negatively affect me and sometimes you're right and sometimes a cookie cookie crumbles the other way mm -hmm. so lower back's been feeling pretty beat up for the last week um but monday or sorry sunday i had my last like semi-heavy session where i hit my last like basically like close-ish to an opener mm -hmm. and it wasn't no pain but it was low enough pain that i think everything will be all right on thursday might not be 100 percent, but put me in the mix Adrenaline's worth a lot with me. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, then, we know that. And then of course today, uh, you know, my kids have been sick all last week, and now I'm kind of fighting off a cold. So, yeah. You know, but Ben and I were talking about this. When stuff like this happens, I actually feel better about things because this has been the arc of my career. Yeah. So, something always happens, kind of close, and I end up winning. So you know, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it until it doesn't work anymore. And speaking of Ben, is he gonna be here handling you? Yeah, Ben's here. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna roll with that crew again. You know, me and yeah. him have such a we have a really good rapport. Um, you know, I trust him. I, I trust his calls. Uh, he knows the rules inside and out. He's been oh yeah on the biggest stages. You know, so. yeah. We all saw how he played the game uh, with all that behind the scenes footage that we had in Scottsdale. Yeah, um, him going in and putting in attempt changes. You guys strategizing over everything. Yeah, it must feel good to have someone at that level in your corner. Have you? 
Yeah, well, I think one time he handled you at the World Championships and you finished in second place. Is that right? right? That was a but little otherwise, little. you pretty much win every time. Yeah. And Ben's handling you. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, he's a good luck charm. Good luck charm. Uh, and honestly, like Open Worlds, I got second, but I felt like it was a win because, I mean, that's when Christoph Becky was yeah. in the 93s. Yeah. And I mean, like, I'm good, but I also, like, you know, I'm not putting 150 pounds of my total out of nowhere. Yeah. And so once Christoph pulled his first deadlift, I mean, he knew the beat was over. But, I mean, I, it was funny because up to that point, I had never gone nine for nine to meet in my entire life. Mm-hmm. And I still, I don't know I told this story on, on uh, awesome. Power of the America, but <laughs> okay. um, 12 weeks out from that meet, um, Matt Gary sent me an email. And, you know, Matt's forgotten more about powerlifting than most people, oh, than yeah. anybody else ever oh, would yeah. know. Matt was breaking down every single competitor in my category. And I think I was nominated like seventh or eighth or something like that. Matt's breaking down every single person, their strengths, their weaknesses. And at the end, he goes, you have an outside chance to medal, but you have to be perfect. If you miss a lift, you're going to be out. Wow. Train like your life depends on it. Wow. And I was like, don't tell me that. Don't, don't yeah, tell me yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you sh- already trained like you like to sh- Sure enough, you know, that was the first meet I ever went nine for nine. Um, you know, so the world squat record at the time, uh, got a gold medal in squat, uh, silver medal in deadlift and silver medal overall. And I mean, that was the best I could have done. Amazing. So I was super stoked. So even though it was second, it still, for me, felt like a win. Yeah. That's, that's so cool, man. And I mean, we all are basically playing out of the Matt Gary playbook all these years. Oh, later. Yeah. And that, I mean, basically, if you're not, you're behind the curve. Exactly. I mean, so he's a legend. He's, he's one of my idols. Um, let's fast forward all the way up to this last competition in Scottsdale. Um, take us through like what happened in Scottsdale, the battle that you had with Michael Garazzo mm-hmm. and just how that was. Yeah. I mean, he was a little bit of a wild card because his top end was real high. Um, but we kind of saw, like we go through all our, all our competitors and we do homework and we saw, you know, okay, you know, he usually doesn't hit his third deadlift. Um, usually he misses a couple other lifts, you know, that sort of thing. We weren't banking on that, but we felt if we were fit within, we knew we had a strong squat coming in, but we didn't really know where it was going to be because he's coming down a weight class. You know, he had done a local meet, but not a national meet. He done like some USPA meets and stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah, deadlift yeah. bar stuff. Yeah. So we, we felt good about my chances. Like we felt like even if I just hit the numbers I had during training, that I was going to have a, a, I was going to be tough to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did. He he brought it on meet day. But coming out of squats, when I was, I was only down five kilos. Uh, we felt good about my position because I have a stronger bench, and then we felt like our deadlifts were similar, but I still felt like I had a higher top end, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, I got called for depth on my first squat, which I was really surprised by. I still felt like it was a good squat, but you know, something that's powerful. It felt like the air kind of went out of the room a little bit. Though. Not for me. Not yeah, for me. Yeah. I, I, you know, me, me and Ben had done this enough. I went back. So I play like mental games with myself where I'm like, oh, this makes for an even better story now if I do it this <laughs> way. You know, like it adds a little spice to it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so I told Ben, you know, he's like, do you feel like you need to be taken? I'm like, no, I got the strength. Let's go for the let's go for the second. We backed it off two and a half kilos just to give me a little bit extra. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then when we hit two seventy five on a third, you know, we had planned to hit uh, two eighty for a third. But he also was five kilos off what he had planned, exactly based on what he said. Yeah. So we kept pace, and that's why I always say like people complain about judging, but you know, for the most part, it's the same for anyone. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like I'm like I didn't get that call, but I've gotten some other calls I probably should have shouldn't have gotten. Yeah. So. You know, I just kind of roll with it and, um, you know, try not to let it get in my head and just focus on, hey, I got two other lifts and I'm going to hit those and, you know, we'll see how it goes. And um, so anyway, when it came to, uh, like, after bench, I think I was just down, I think I was, I think I was up two and a half after bench. Been up two and a half at time mm-hmm. and felt really good going into deadlift. Um, like you said, there was some some back and forth. Yeah. Um, I ended up needing the third pull, a 315 to beat him. Yeah. Um, still felt like I had a solid five to seven and a half kilos in the tank. He was actually telling me. He went out and hit his third, right? No, he missed his third deadlift. Okay. okay. But he, so he has an interesting, at least his strategy there was interesting. Be different this time because he's got Susie Gary handling. Oh wow! So, so we be, got Ben. This will be the chess match. Susie. Yes. Oh, this is this is gonna be a chess match. He leveled up. So, coaching. 
So yeah, because I, having good coaching is a big advantage. Yeah. So wow. that's going to be, I consider that a wash now, you know, um, he opened very heavy. That's, what it, was. that's what it was. He had position on you. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he opened very yeah. heavy because we looked at his opening deadlift. I'm like 300. Yeah. I'm like, you know, uh, but I, you know, I trust me. I, everyone was nervous about it. I mean, cause yeah. I, I was following you very closely and I was like, I don't, you know, we're going to we invested all this stock in lane here. <laughs> and then it's like, then this guy opens like this. And I'm just like, I was nervous, but that's, that's why I thought he hit his third and then you had to hit it, but it was, he just had position. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, you know, for me, one of the things I do well is I don't, I don't scoreboard watch too much. Yeah. Like, and I don't, I just go, okay, I'm just going to hit my lips. I'm just going to hit my lips. Just going to hit my lips. And then when we get to deadlifts, then I'll look at the scoreboard a little yeah. bit and see yeah. where things are looking. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like golf. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a little bit of jockey you can do, but you just hit your lips, you know? Like, he can open at 300, but if I change my game plan, it's not going to help me. No. Like, I can't go and stop him from what he's doing, so I'm just going to do what I do. Yeah. You know, I always felt like I'm going to go be known as a guy. I'm going to go eight for nine, nine for nine. I'm going to put pressure on everybody else to mm -hmm. hit their lifts. Mm -hmm. And people start making mistakes. I mean, I always joked it. I was never the strongest guy at the two, na oh, two open nationals I won. Mm -hmm. But people started chasing me early and making mistakes. And then by the end, I was the last one standing. That's kind of what happened at the World Championships last year with Gabriel Garcia as well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, similar, similar concept there. Well, Gabriel's he's tough to judge because I mean, he's been hitting some big squat numbers in training. Mm -hmm. But they look kind of high. Okay. So it's tough to judge like what he's going to hit. But again, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to, you know... Whatever's going to be is going to be. I'm not going to pull 15 kilos on my squat out of nowhere. So I'm just going to focus on the numbers I got to hit. And then when we get down to deadlifts, if I need a little extra mustard to win, then we'll go. But I, I felt like, you know, on each lift at nationals, I still, on squat and deadlift, felt like I, de squat and bench press, I definitely felt like I had two and a half in the tank, maybe five. And then on deadlifts, I definitely felt like I had five to seven and a half, maybe even 10. Yeah, I mean, I think so, I phrase it last week is like you had to hit your third there was he was applying some pressure yeah. it was definitely not like a cakewalk oh it wasn't but yeah in both of your last two battles you you your third deadlift you definitely had more and you had the option in the, the world championships to just yolo yeah you know because you had already locked it up on your second you know but um but yeah so getting into that you have had two big battles now your last two outings at the world championships you've come out on top of both of them um, you won against Michael in Scottsdale. You punch your ticket to the World Championships again in Mongolia. But yet, here we are two months later in the Cayman Islands yeah. at the North American Championships. What was the reason that made you decide to come down here to the Cayman Islands instead of going to Mongolia? My ego. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> Michael and Gabriel were doing it and they weren't doing Worlds. And mm -hmm. those, are the top, those are the other top two guys in the division. Yeah. And I felt like, man, if I don't hop a 90 minute plane flight and go do this thing, I'm going to feel like I was ducking. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, like Gabriel, I beat him last year. You know, I, I don't, I feel like you're not the champ until you, for me, okay, this is going to sound like unpopular opinion. I feel like the world championship doesn't even matter if those guys aren't there. Like, mm -hmm. it matters. But to me, it's like, I'd rather beat these guys here and have no world championship mm -hmm. than have. I wouldn't be avoiding them because I don't have to do this competition. Yeah. But feel like I avoid. Them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I mean, it's gonna make it so much sweeter. Are you? What happens after this? Are you? Are you going to Mongolia? Are you gonna go and get your second world title? We'll see how I feel coming out of this. We'll, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. You yeah. know, it's tough to go with kids. It's Mongolia. Uh, it's it's Mongolia. a Mongolia. It's a hike. You know, yeah. it is, I think I looked up that it's the coldest capital city in the world. Oh man. So, well, we'll see. I'm try. I try not to look too far past where I'm at right now. You know, I think that's a dangerous game to play. Um, but we'll see how I feel. You know, right now yeah. I'm loving doing this stuff. I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can. Yeah. And I mean, obviously you really can't think past these two guys. No, no. That you got here. I mean, because they, they both, I mean, ha are formidable opponents for sure. That's why you're here. Absolutely. And I mean, I guess when you say that the World Championships, like, it doesn't matter. It's partially because in your weight and age class, 
there's not a ton of depth. I mean, you, right. the, the three of you are at the very top. Right. And so if one of you, if there are two unless of you. Unless somebody comes up, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, unless someone comes out of nowhere, we, we, which we don't know. And I mean, the odds of it happening in Mongolia, where I think the numbers are a lo lot lower than they were um, in Newfoundland, Canada last right. year. So that was probably the most stacked world championships that we'll see at the Masters for a minute at least until it yeah. comes back to a, a country that is easier to get to. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, I'm glad you did it. I mean, you're, you're a ultimate badass for taking the challenge. Um, I'm really surprised too that Michael, you know, um, he, he's also up for the challenge because this is a short turnaround for Masters. It is a short. So especially yeah. in 93s. What you guys, to say? I mean, especially for 93s, right? I mean, like you guys aren't yeah. like you're super lightweight classes where you can recover super fast. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a big, and you know, and you're feeling it, it sounds like Michael's feeling it a little bit. I don't know. I haven't seen any of Gabriel's training, but uh, I'm sure, like you said, um, this deep in prep, everyone's feeling a little banged up. Yeah. He's had more time to train though, because he's, he's been, I, I believe, well, no, I think he did do a local meet. Did he? Um, in March, I want to say. So okay. he's had a little more time. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll find yeah. out. It'll be fun. Julia, you've been awful quiet. What do you have any, are, are you just starstruck by Lane Or What do you have? Yeah, what kind of, uh, what kind of questions do you have for him? Give him some, some side curveball question that he's not ready for. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that like, I know you are a big fan of, uh, Matt Gary and you did something in Scottsdale that he says is very hard to do which is you missed your first lift uh -huh. and then you got all the rest of your lifts. Uh -huh. And he said that, I remember in his book, he says that's, you know, like a 2% chance or something crazy. Like Very that. low. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's really cool. Um, yeah. So ben I, actually actually came up to me after the meet and said, I'm the most proud of you for this meet. Yeah. Wow. He's like, cause I, cause what you did is, uh, he said the same thing. It's very hard to do. Yeah. But again, it's just like, I put that, I don't know. I like when something goes wrong, I, listen, I'm not going to sit there and be like, yes, I missed my first squat, right? No, but I'm like, all right, now I can go show why I'm different. Why I'm not going to let this get in my head. I'm going to go out and I'm going to nail these lifts. Mm -hmm. And to me, it makes it more meaningful. I put a post the other day. I'm like, you know, the, the most epic moments I've had in my life, they were only epic because there was really hard stuff that happened leading up to that. If that hard stuff hadn't happened, they wouldn't have felt so epic. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess in that vein, you know, who are some other people you look up to in powerlifting besides oh, Matt Gary, the coach? You know, I think my my perspective has kind of shifted a little bit, and I really like admire people who have that that dogged determination. You know, seeing Mike Tushare come back and get a silver medal this year yeah. after seven years of being out of nationals. I mean. I was I was there in Austin announcing with Ryan Lapidat. Yeah. We were like both standing on our chairs, yeah. booping it up because we're so excited for Mike T. You know that was such and an epic battle as well. Yeah. Three way battle there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So fun. I mean, obviously, like you know, I'm a huge fan of Ray Williams. You know the what he's done for the sport, mm -hmm. uh, moving it forward. Um, you know, and then you know, you just there's so many good people in. in in the sport. And honestly, when I was out for seven years being injured, trying to come back, I told everybody, what I missed the most was the community. Yeah. You know, like there's such a great community. And, um, I mean, I could go on and on, but you know, then on the female side, obviously Susie Gary is just an absolute like machine. She'll be know? lifting tomorrow. I know. 10, 10 a.m. Eastern. 8,000 people the rest yes. of the day. You know, it's just, and that, that's another thing that blows my mind. Like when I'm lifting, I've had lifters in the same. I'm like, I'm, I here, I got somebody who's coaching you on game day because yeah. I, I got to lift. I'm too selfish, yeah. you know. So the people that do that kind of stuff, incredible. But and then you know, like obviously, like I actually have a lot of respect for Ben, like yeah. Ben Escrow, because mm -hmm. you know we talked about it. You know the way Ben kind of pioneered a lot of like the modern powerlifting training. I mean Matt Gary was was doing a lot of that as well, but Ben kind of made it a little bit more popular with everything and, and being a little more out at the forefront. And we were talking about this, I was talking about this with Taylor Atwood, me and him were going back and forth in Instagram uh, voice messages. And, uh, you know, we were like, the reason that we're so locked in on meet day is because people right now at the age of Instagram, they don't want to train in fatigue. 
Because they want to put up, oh, I want to put up my PRs. I want to show all these lifts I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I do not PR in the gym. It doesn't happen because I'm training so high fatigue. But I don't care about that. I care about that. Mm -hmm. I care about hitting PRs or doing my best on the platform. And a lot of people, they start feeling that fatigue. They start feeling that stiffness, that soreness, and lifts start going down. And they go, ah, oh, you know. But when you have trained through that, when you have trained through bone crushing, soul sucking training, I think the four weeks leading up to Open Worlds in 2015, I was squatting four times a week, deadlifting twice a week, benching four times a week. My The lightest squat set I hit was 230 kilos for five sets of seven. That was the lightest I did. I was conservative maxing twice a week. Wow. Um, over 600 pounds each time. And a week out, I had a 640 pound squat. You know, it was going, the world record at the time was 661. But I was like so beat up during all that time. But it's like when you do that, when you've trained through that, you actually feel good on meet day. Like there's just not a whole lot that rattles you because you executed so many times when you feel like garbage. It just gives you so much confidence. Yeah. So I, I respect Ben for going against the grain with a lot of what powerlifting training was, which was I'm going to hit this really big top set and then not really do much else, you know? And now I think a lot of people have recognized that, hey, fatigue is a tool as long as you don't overdo it. And, you know, it's made a lot of people really strong. Yeah, I mean, that's you're talking basically about the pioneering of the strength guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we got strength guys athletes in here. Two of these ladies that are sitting here are with strength yep. guys. You're kind of a... De facto, you were Zach, and that's kind of off yep. that same train, yeah, uh, that same off. line of thinking. And it all goes back up to Matt Gary and yeah. Susie Gary, you know. Yeah. And um, it's funny, at Nationals in 2014, my first Nationals I won, Jason Tremblay came up to me. Really? He's like, I got this kid. He's going to be the next big thing. But he got, uh, Taylor got beat that year. I forget by who. And he was really upset. Oh, yeah. And he's like, will you come say something to him? Wow. And I was like, yeah, so me and Taylor had this little show. I don't even know. If, actually, he did say he remembered it. Wow. I don't even know if he remembered it. And now, you know, he's gone to be like, you could argue the most successful powerlifter in history. Yep, absolutely. Argue that he's a living legend. And I'm going to say that it was because of that speech. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> of course it was, man. No, that's an awesome backstory, man. Lane, I know you got to get out of here, but um, I just, the last thing I want to ask you about, I mean, you always, man, I could just talk to you forever, but show us your fingernails and tell us about your pre- meet ritual with your daughter and uh, your good luck charm for the competition yeah so uh my daughter olivia she likes painting my nails it's just we we had done it before before i ever competed but then at nationals in 2022 she was like can i paint your nails and she was going to be there it was the first time my kids were going to see me compete and i was like yeah honey sure so we did that one and then before world, she was like, I want to paint your nails so when I'm watching TV, watching you on TV, I can see the nails. Wow. And it was cool too, because like when I'm like trying to get fired up for my lifts, all I gotta do is look down at my hands. Yeah, you know? I saw that. Yep. I saw so, that in Scottsdale. Um and then before Scottsdale, I, so that time before like the other two times she initiated, before Scottsdale, I'm like, all right, man, let's go. Nice. Hot pink, let's do it. Yep. You know? Yep. And then uh this week I was like, all right, man. It's Sunday before the meet. It's time to paint the old nails. And so what color scheme? I don't know. if They're, they're a little far from the camera. I don't know if they can see it, but uh, what Red, color? white, and blue, baby. There we go. Red, white, and blue represent. We got all... You're the only American that we're interviewing tonight. Uh, besides Vin Mangione's in the room. He's one of the coaches, but, you know, you're the best. So it's all right. You can handle it. You can uh, take... Not it. always best on the platform, but best on the mic, you know? Oh, 100%. <laughs> 100% man. All right, brother. We'll let you get up on out of here. Thanks, buddy. Uh, appreciate it so much. And um, we're rooting for you, man. It's going to be one of the biggest battles of the competition. One yeah, of the most excited. exciting ones. I'm excited. I mean, we, me and Mike and Gabe have been talking online. Have you, are you guys all cool? Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Mike and I like Gabe. I also yeah, yeah. want to whoop their ass, but yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's for the, I've never had a rivalry with anybody that I didn't respect didn't get along with. I mean, me and LS, my God, we had so many oh, battles in the mid and you know, teens. And, you know, I've got, I'll have to show it to you sometime. I've got a hilarious video from Worlds in 2015 because LS was an alternate got on. Yeah. And it's between my, our first and, or second and third squad. 
And you know LS, he's listening to his music, he's smiling, he's yeah. grooving. Yeah. And so I'm like He's yeah. very different from you. Oh, totally different. Yeah. But I'm like I like see him doing that. I'm like taking a video and I'm like Nice. You know, trolling him. And then yeah, we, we just had uh you know such good times and that's cool. Uh, you know, he's obviously like one of the all time greats. I mean, people I respect, like that's another one, is Alice McLean. Like, of course, man. You know, no question, just one of the all time greats. Yeah. In, uh, in uh, American powerlifting. Definitely. One of the sweetest and also who has the most fun. Oh. Yeah. And everyone here, like, we're talking to Laura and Sammy, everyone. And we all hung out with him in North American Championships last year. He's a sweet guy. Oh, yeah. He wants to grow the sport. He's one of the nicest, friendliest people. Yep. Every, he's, he's comic relief in the warm-up room. He'll jump on the live stream and oh, yeah. crack jokes and stuff. So, all right. All right, man. Let's get you out of here. Otherwise, we'll just keep going on and on forever. I need you to sleep and go beat these guys, all right? I mean, if you lose to anyone, though, you know, Michael, he's good. You know, we'll take that gold. We'll take gold and silver. For sure. Exactly. All right, guys. First, we're going to get Sammy. Come on over, Sammy. Come on in over here. Hey, bro. Oh, go! I can just get you. You got two more. Yeah, All right. It's okay. You can skip out. You can skip out. Ooh, I can see yeah. myself. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Next up. Oh, my goodness. We've got. I'm feeling a little nervous. You're a little bit nervous? <laughs> I just feel like you've talked about me so many times already. Oh, yeah. While I've been sitting there, I'm like, mm. I mean, you've been shooting daggers over here. Though. I've been doing no such thing. I've been over there laughing and having a good time with Christina and Laura. So please. I think, I think you might have the most attitude though. I think you're intimidating. You're kind of a bully. You're kind of a bully. Are you, would you, do people call you a bully? I mean, no. I think that I was a little bully as a child, but let me tell you the truth. I think that when you are deeply um, insecure, I was a fat kid and us fat kids out there, we know that you kind of got to be the bigger dog, you know, you got to be the bigger dog in order for other people not to make your life a living hell. And I kind of learned that, you know, People are always gonna have something to say, so just kind of come on on top. And I think that as I get older and older, I learn to take that back to present a very. I'm a very friendly person. I love to talk to people. I'm outgoing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can walk out with me. Absolutely. You know, I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be my authentic self. And if you don't like it, well, I love that for you, but I like me enough that it's fine. <laughs> Boom! She's already dropping sound bites in here. <laughs> um, okay, so who's the strongest lifter in Jamaica? So first of all, I mean, oh, we, didn't even, we didn't even we didn't even introduce her. Semi to pass, seventy six kilo superstar from Jamaica. Okay, in case you didn't know from the colors, always referencing. She's repping from Jamaica. She's the reigning North American champion, but she's the runner up when it comes to being best lifter behind Christine Castro. How did that make you feel when Laura? Brought that up and rubbed it. Yeah, she dunked you. She dunked on you. Rubbed it in your face. Oh yeah, yeah. So how does that make you feel? Are you is it is that the last checkbox that you have to tick at no. North American Championships? No, I actually forgot about it. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Christine is such an amazing person, and yeah. we've we've been to a few competitions together. Now we talk outside of um, lifting, just like checking up on one another, and I think that. She's just a really sweet person. And to be very honest with you, no matter how competitive I am, I never wish on anybody's downfall. I want people to do well. I want them to go out there and PR. I want them to have a nine for nine day. Why? Because that makes me rise to the occasion every time. Mm -hmm. You, me, sometimes, you know, you brought up me being number one in Jamaica. Yeah. Well, what actually, I didn't. Means. I asked who was the strongest. <laughs> what? All right. So, a two-time Jamaica national champion. What that means for me sometimes is that when I go to compete in Jamaica at our nationals, there's not there's sort of a big gap between me and my next competitor, mm -hmm. and that's that's strictly factually speaking, not me like bragging on myself. So when I show up to that, I try to never forget that nothing is guaranteed. There's nothing. Nothing is. 
I have to earn every kilo. Mm -hmm. I don't, just because I've done this before, just because I've won before, doesn't mean that I'm any more deserving of winning than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And when I show up, I try to always remember that I was a beginner once and I wasn't always number one in Jamaica. So I try to make other people feel like I'm, I'm, just like them, because mm -hmm. I am. I was that person four years ago. I'd never really competed. 2019 was my first competition. I took two years off after that and then went right into the powerlifting scene when Jamaica got a federation. And that's been kind of like a whirlwind of just a lot of grinding, to be honest. So tell us a little bit for the people out there from Powerlifting America, that, that's where most of our audience is. Mm -hmm. they, might, they might not know you, but they might know you because you did come to Powerlifting America Nationals in our inaugural class, Open Classic Nationals in Austin, Texas. I did. Was that your first international competition? But you, you lived in the U.S. before, though. So I went to school at Texas A&M, and then I transferred to UCF. However, I feel like when I was getting into powerlifting, it was kind of like, really cliquish mm -hmm. you couldn't really get into it it was sort of like the cool kids club mm -hmm. and you weren't in it and i was like okay that's cool so i was just lifting like recreationally and then i realized one day i was kind of strong and then i kind of just kept going from there found a coach blah 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 and then when we when we were invited to guest lift at um, powerlifting America that was sort of like the biggest meet that I'd ever been to or yeah. been invited to mm -hmm. and it was just an amazing experience because you're among world-class lifters you're among Taylor Atwood you're among all of these stars and although like as a Jamaican I'm never gonna fangirl because I just because you're always the brightest star in the room not right? even that <laughs> not even that Jamaicans are just yeah. We're not frightened for nobody, which basically means that like we just are not gonna act like you're better than us. Like you could be you same bold and we see you in the street and we're like, What's up, bro? Yeah. We're just not the type of people to be like, ah Yeah. It's just not how we are. So I, I have to say you had that remembering back to that competition because I was there and um you definitely had that attitude a little bit more than Scott did. Yeah, absolutely. Scott, oh was, my like, God. Scott was a little more starstruck. Scott you've like, always been oh a, my God, Taylor. Yeah, you've always been a little more of a badass. But I do also remember too at that time, like you you have definitely changed since then as well. Like you've mm -hmm. come your confidence has really grown since then as well. And yeah. so tell us the path from there. Oh my God, the path from there. When I went to that meet, I think I tried to pull five hundred at that meet. And it was such an ego lift because the 480 was probably one of, arguably one of the biggest grinds of my life. <laughs> and if you know me, I'm a deadlift grinder. I'm a grinder SHIT to the very end. Yeah. <laughs> I would keep grinding it until I get it, but the bar would not even budge off of the ground. And it was super like demotivating to me because I was like, damn, I've been working on this forever. Mm -hmm. But after that meet, I started working with Ariane. Okay. And he kind of changed the game for me. He was like, um, I don't know what you've been doing, but <laughs> it ain't it. Yeah. And he just sort of reminded me that I have to earn every kilo and I have to earn the weight on the bar and I have to keep putting my best foot forward. Like I have nothing, I don't deserve anything. I have to work for it. Yeah. So working with him and learning how he does stuff and just sort of having him to always bounce things off of and even when i'm complaining or i'm um complaining because i do that a lot with him <laughs> he's like suck it up buttercup mm -hmm. <laughs> and we just keep it pushing he's a good coach for you because he doesn't take shit either he really doesn't yeah. and as you said about my confidence you know as lane said when you are in the gym and you are a workhorse and you are putting in hours weeks months when you get on the platform it's literally just an opportunity to showcase all of that hard work mm -hmm. so when we were when i was at worlds and the commentators i was listening and when i wasn't supposed to be listening and they were like you know every time she walks out she's just so confident and then she gives us a little smile when she gets a lift mm -hmm. and i'm like you know i literally say to myself when i'm in the back i go through my commands so often because i'm actually a very anxious person and i go on that platform and i'm like yo sam you've done this so many times you have done this weight even if i've never done the weight in my life i'm like you've done this weight mm -hmm. you're capable you're 
you're going to walk out there with your head high and you are going to execute this lift because you have not been killing up yourself in the gym to fail this. So boom, bam, and then at worlds it just so happened to pay off. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, let's not fast forward past the North American Championships last year. So that was your second really big meet after the Pop American yeah. Nationals, right? So what happened there last year at the North American Championships? Man, I really love NAPF because it's usually the first opportunity for people in the Caribbean to, you know, come out internationally, showcase the talent, the amazing talent that we have in the Caribbean. Yeah. And for me, I was a little bit um, hesitant to do NAPF simply because I used to be so close to weight that I would have to go through such drastic measures to hit my weight class mm -hmm. that it would really hinder my performance. So NAPF last year, I was water cutting, I was going into the sauna, I was Epsom salt soaking for an hour, like, and then having to come the next day and like put your game face on is super hard when your body is telling you like you've done too much. So for me, it was also a lesson. I never did that again after that. You know, I said to myself, Yo, you're either going to fit in this weight class or you're going to have to go up and there's, the, you're not going to keep having this opportunity. Like you're cutting it too close. So going into worlds, I learned a lot from NAPF, which was basically, you know, cut more in advance. And I showed up to worlds and I was ready to go mm -hmm. because I hadn't cut like that. I literally had yeah. 0.2 to lose to hit my world's, um, weight so i was super confident with that it's crazy i've been at all your big meets you have uh, ah! and uh and i do remember at the north american championships last year that you you did seem like a little rattled oh but the God. thing was was that you didn't have any like major competition in the weight class mm -hmm. like you were going to take the gold medal you were going to be the north american champion but it was kind of a question of like would you be best lifter mm -hmm. Or would you have a good day or a PR day? And you and you didn't. And I remember, really I remember, yeah, like, and, and even just the sauna situation there was tough. It was more difficult, I think, than at in Malta, where it's like a little bit better facilities and things exactly. like that. But um, I remember meeting you then in Malta now, and you had a swagger. <laughs> you you were back to just normal Sammy, slamming yep. Sammy. And, Slam it, Sammy, as the yeah, king of the list calls. Yeah, me. and um, and you had that swagger and everything. And I wasn't able actually to watch your session um, because you were in the B group. How did that yeah. feel? Did you have a chip on your shoulder being in the B group? Hmm. As I have previously said, I never underestimate anybody, and, and nobody should ever underestimate me for the simple reason that we have no idea what other people are capable of. You have no idea what people are going to do when their back is against the wall, you know? And I think that going into the B group, I had said to my coach, like, yo, I'm not finishing in the B group. I am getting into the A group. And I really honestly was just focused on myself. I'm a very stay in your own lane kind of competitor. When I'm in my zone, like, I usually, there's so many pictures of me when my face is like, I'm like this, mm -hmm. like I'm super dialed in because it's my, it's my race. I'm running my own race. I'm not looking at anybody else. Although, yeah, I'm keeping an eye on my competitors. I'm also really not because Arian has my game plan already yeah. and nothing is changing that. It's all about how do I execute this first lift and then my second and my third and my fourth and my fifth and my sixth. And that's what I was focused on at Worlds. So I didn't even think about my total. I didn't think about where I was coming out. But I was like, oh my God, at the end of this, I was like, I cannot believe that I did that. So you mentioned that I signed back my NAPF nomination. Remember For that my nomination came in before my worlds yeah. came out yeah. so i have a i think it's a 532.5 kilogram total oh um not flex. a 512 little flex total. little flex I'm over here little, uh, mm -mm, 532 because i'm most proud of that bench sweetie because yeah. she's coming a long way well, to that 242. <laughs> well just looking at your numbers i mean you you basically went from 505 503 ish to 512 and then boom 532.5 i mean so you're really taking off things are taking off you're becoming a very dangerous threat at the world level you finished in seventh place at the first you were the first jamaican, jamaican to lift yep. in the world championships right 
which is terrifying. Being the first is all fun and games until you are the first. Yeah. And then but, it's like, oh my God. But now are people coming up to you in the streets like Laura was talking about? I am not really, but yes, like people in Jamaica really, powerlifting is, is such a new sport yeah. in Jamaica that they swear I'm a weightlifter. Mm -hmm. Like I get that a lot and I also get bodybuilder and there, somebody was like, um, you don't really look like a bodybuilder. And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, because yeah. I'm not, I am a powerlifter. And then I have to explain what powerlifting is. And trust me, that's one of my favorite things. I can talk about powerlifting whenever, wherever, because it's, I dedicate so much of my life to it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always happy to educate people on it. Um, but worlds was an amazing experience and I think that I took that seventh place very personally. Um, yeah. You ain't gonna see me at Worlds again coming seventh. I or eighth or ninth. Yeah. Let's just put that or tenth or You're eleventh. Be in prime time. You're <laughs> or be in prime time. or or further. Like you know, you'd be like, oh, I'm not coming seventh, and then coming tenth. Like <laughs> um, no, famous I, last words. Famous last words. I I have no plans of going back. Um, and. I think that belief in self is part of what makes this sport so mental. Mm -hmm. If you go under that bar and you are not confident that you have a chance of getting it, chances are you're not going to get it simply yeah. because it's such a mental game of, yo, can I actually do this? There are so many times either in training, in competition where I approach a bar like I've already lifted that weight simply because I've done done five pounds lighter. I'm like, yo, you've done this already, girl. It's nothing. But at the same time, as we were talking about with last year NAPF where I missed my 418 squat. It was my third attempt. I literally just didn't have it. And I had done that at I'd done 420 at Jamaica Nationals. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of like a realization for me that I will never hit the numbers that I'm capable of if I keep having to put my body through those drastic weight cuts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Claire actually talks a lot about um, yeah. weight cutting and stuff like that. Yeah. And I really appreciated her, um, the inclusivity of it in the sport. Being lighter does not make you a better lifter. Yeah. It doesn't make you more important. It doesn't make you, you know, better. But sometimes in powerlifting, it is very like, oh, somebody's lighter than you and lifting heavier, so they're better or more important. Yeah. And I really think that Claire, even though she is my competitor, she does an amazing job of speaking about those issues in powerlifting and also doing her best to educate. And that makes a huge difference for women's sports. And I think that makes a huge difference in your competitive life with people because although you do want to win you also want to see other women win as well wow that's amazing what a weight class over here in the 76 is with you claire and christine i mean all of you are just such amazing smart inspiring people you know in your own ways and i love that you i love that you're giving a shout out to claire and the things that she was talking about um it's just cool really cool to see but then I also know on game day, you're going to bring that fire in. Wait till you see Claire. Have you ever, you've never seen her compete before, um, have you? So before you ask me who my favorite PA lifter is, I'll already tell you. Uh -huh. It's Chelsea Savitt and also Dana McNeil. Okay. They're my girls. I love them. Okay. But I watched Chelsea and Claire compete in the 69. So I had my eye on that. Um, I had no idea that Claire was going to move up to a 76, but um, it was... It was, she's very similar, I think, in competition style to me. Like, we're all fun and games until, like, we have our headphones in. And yeah. then it's, like, dialed in, focused, yeah. ready to do whatever. And, you know, it's not always a matter of who wants it more. It's literally not. It's, it's sometimes it's the game, meaning yeah. who chooses the right attempt choices. Yeah. And it's yeah. who... Um, is best peaked for that meet. And also, you know, Claire is lighter um, than I am. Yeah. So it's also a numbers game of GL points and all yeah. of that stuff. So the reality is like, I'm never gonna go into anything and underestimate my opponent or underestimate anybody as I've said, because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's running her race, I'm running mine, but somewhere 
somebody's gonna get there first yeah. somebody's gonna win somebody's gonna come out on top and either which way i obviously want that to be to be me because i'm yeah. a very competitive person but i'm not gonna be somebody who at the end of it all doesn't say like yo kudos to you mm -hmm. that was an amazing performance let's do it again next time and i don't know if you if you watched claire's press conference uh, in austin after uh, after taking that, like, that was a very tough loss. Mm -hmm. um, and she came out and she just gave one of the best press conferences of the whole competition. Oh, I mean, just so awesome. poised, so intelligent, so so just like well-spoken, just every little detail, great sport. I mean, to take an L and then go sit in front of a camera and talk about it is so difficult. I mean, it almost like brought me to tears. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like, know if I'm that good of a person <laughs> so don't try to interview me after no yeah. to be very honest with you like how you lose almost says more about you than how you win that's i, I messaged her right after i said and exactly sometimes that. though like we face the biggest losses when nobody else can see it you get what i'm saying like yeah. so like if somebody acts a certain way after losing i'm not just thinking that they're reacting to that loss i'm thinking about all the things that they sacrificed to get there like i have no like nobody ha like you probably don't have all of any idea of all of the things i've sacrificed yeah. you know what was my mental health leading up to this all of those little things yeah. and when you lose it almost feels like all of those things were for nothing unless you can spin it to be something that just happens in the game like you are not always going to be a winner you're not always going to be a loser you have to find the middle ground where you can take lessons from both of those things exactly. wow. you know so seventh at worlds for me was a lesson in a lot of things but it was also a victory for me in a lot of ways because i never in my life thought i would be seventh at worlds i never thought i'd be in an elevator with carlino yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Who thinks, like, from my little island of 2.5 million people, yeah. that I would ever have gotten to that point where, you know, keep in mind that I had to put out a GoFundMe to be supported, yeah. right? And my followers are the ones who really got me there. So people believe in me that much that they were willing to put their money where their mouth is and say, yo, I'm going to send this girl to Malta. And that to me made everything worth it because I'm like, no matter what I'm doing or not doing, people believe in me like I believe in myself. Yeah. And that was such a monumental moment for me. Like I was, so, when my dad was screaming in the crowd, I'm gonna get a little emotional. Yeah. My dad was screaming in the crowd. I've been a loser so often in my life. Like I was the type of person who I never tried because I never wanted to fail, right? And that in, a, in and of itself, you're never really trying because you're scared of the perception of your failure, yeah. like how other people are going to perceive your failure. And, you know, my dad used to show up at my cross country meets and be like, you did your best. And I was like, no, dad, I really didn't. And that's what he would always say to me. Hey, did you do your best? And if my answer is yes, then yo, boop, high five, great job. If I didn't do my best, he's like, well, you suck then. <laughs> like it was really that simple like if you're not even going to put a hundred percent of your effort into this i'm not bigging you up for that like if you seventh was the best that i could do at the time in the b group if i was in the a group could i have put up a little more who knows you get what i mean like it's a lot of coulda woulda shoulda but the reality is i did the very best i could with what i had and he was beyond proud of me for that seventh place That's and awesome. it made the biggest deal to have him screaming for me in the crowd and sharing with other jamaicans what i had accomplished and honestly my entire prep was about making myself proud making other people proud is one thing when you make yourself proud because you know what you do when nobody's watching right? I know what I ate. I know what I drank. I know when I went to sleep. I know how often I walked the steps I was supposed to. Those things is what really defined to me making myself proud. Wow. That's awesome. You're, I mean, well, you're an inspiration for your country, but even just the words that you're saying right now, I'm sure are inspiring anyone that's listening to it. Um, Julia, do you have any follow-up questions or any questions that you wanted to throw at her? 
Well, first of all, I got a lot out of that. So yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. I was just listening. You were going off there. That was um, amazing. Sometimes I say things, I think because I'm led to say them, because sometimes I really need to hear these things too. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the background, in the back of my head, like, yeah, girl, do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what, where do you want to see the sport in five years? Where do you see it and where do you want to see it? Um, so I was just talking about this to someone. When I first started powerlifting, when you walked into a commercial gym, there was no powerlifters inside. You had to go to a specialized gym. They didn't even have barbells, really, that fit what we were trying to do. So I, now, every time I go into a gym, like a commercial gym in the States when I'm visiting, I'm seeing people with powerlifting gear, with knee sleeves, like just even more aware of the sport. And I think in five years, I'd like to see us go even further and probably have it in more high schools and have more girls introduced to the fact that strength training is not a men's sport. It's not a masculine sport. In Jamaica, we are still kind of stuck with this idea that strength sports are for men. Um, you know, we know women in our lives who embody strength and yet we still see not like in our mind, strength is still masculine, which is crazy because women arguably go through so much in life and they portray so many aspects of what being strong is, whether being a mother, an aunt, a sister, a friend, being there for people in times of need. And we still don't think of women as being like the the poster boy for being strong and that's kind of crazy to me yeah actually um right before this show started tonight uh, i was talking to the police team and the i think it was the coach um or one of the lifters said um you know like i'm going through some injuries right now and she said oh it's okay women handle pain better there, there you go, go. so and strength trainers, physical trainers, all of these people will say those things and then in the same breath be like, oh yeah, but, and then say something after it that just completely ruins the fact that we know that coaches give women more volume, more things like that, because we're able to manage it more. We're just, we live in a society that says that these things are for men and these things are for women. And we're just supposed to be in those boxes. And I think powerlifting is one of those sports that allows women to edge into a box that is our own, that we get to define for ourselves, because that's what strength is about. Defining those things for yourself, defining who you are, defining where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to be doing. Those things are strength, not necessarily Oh, I pick up some dumbbells or I pick up a barbell. You know, there's no such, a barbell isn't masculine. It's literally a tool to pivot you in a different direction, right? You're literally picking up weights. And I think that I would love, especially in my own country, for um, younger girls to be exposed to more women doing that. More women showing them that they can be strong and feminine. They're not... They're not mutually exclusive. You can be anything you want to be and still be a woman, still be feminine, still be strong. Um, so I think that is where I want to see the sport in five years. And speaking of where the sport is going, um, give us a little bit. You, you in Jamaica are hosting the North American Championships yeah. next year. So how does that how is does it that next feel? year or 20, the, uh, oh, the year after? Twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Jamaica is hosting. In 2025, yeah. which is amazing. Jamaica has just been in the powerlifting in IPF for like two years. Yeah. And it's crazy that we're already there. And that is mostly due to um, the president of um, the organization What's and his name? also Michael Blair and also all of the amazing people who, you know, chair the different things in our organization and also the people who come out to support it's it's powerlifting jamaica works together mm -hmm. to really push it forward and it couldn't be done without all of the help of of course robert keller and all of those other people but i would really say that it's an amazing opportunity for jamaica and um, i think by then we'll be pan-american so it won't just be oh yeah it won't just be in the countries that we see here won't be just north america it'll also exactly. include south america exactly so that means brazil will be there they're a big one um exactly. so yeah that's exciting and then, I mean, what's, what does it mean to be, I mean, like you've, you've now represented your country mm -hmm. and the world stage, you, you're the North American champ. 
you finished seventh. You're the first Jamaican to, to lift in the world. Obviously, Scott was there as well. Mm -hmm. He lifted after you, right? He lifted before me. Oh, yeah, so he, he was actually you. the first man, and I was the first woman. Like, okay. He was the first Jamaican ever. Okay, wow. Um, which it's usually going to be the case because he's an 83. He's an 83. So he's always before okay, me. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, <laughs> but, gotcha. But, yeah. But then, then now to then be hosting an yeah, international yes. competition, I mean, it just seems like just yesterday it was like little Sammy and Scotty and Javon and Michael Blair showing up in, in Austin, Texas. And next thing you know, you're hosting international competition. You compete in the world stage. Right. I mean, like, just imagine where the, where Jamaica is going to be in powerlifting, like, in 10 years. I know. It's, it's going to be it's, crazy. It's amazing to think about. And obviously, like, um, Mr. Blair does a lot of things behind the scenes to, like, pivot us into another realm that we probably wouldn't be without him. Simply because, like... Oh my God, it's so much work behind the scenes. Like as you guys were talking about coaching, I could never think of being a coach and a lifter on the same day. Like, like no, Christine. she's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like I got to focus on myself. Yeah. And you, <laughs> you know, know how intense of a coach she is. Yeah, she's, she's screaming she's at everything. She's a stickler, but yeah. I really, I really appreciate her friendliness and her intensity. Yeah. But I don't know how they, they juggle that. But you know, as you said about Jamaica in 10 years, I mean, I'm somebody who likes to think like a year ahead, two years maybe. Ten years seems a little far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, you know, it's amazing to be in something from the inception yeah. to where you want it to go and just like the limitless possibilities. And I would love more women to be going to Worlds for Jamaica. You know, mm -hmm. being the first is all great and all, but you want to bring people with you. Well, you know, you look, want to encourage other people. Like, move. like we were talking with Laura about the soccer player from Brazil. I mean, mm -hmm. someone has to go first and be oh, that role that model. And first. be role model. You know, you we know? all need a representation that we we are capable of doing it because being the first is almost like you're starting from scratch, and it's so nerve wracking and just so intense to be somebody who, basically, if any Jamaican goes after me, they're looking at my picture like. Oh, she was first. And it's yeah. crazy to think of yourself in that way because there's no going back from that. Yeah. You know, and um, when you, the girl that Laura was talking about, the Brazilian soccer player, yeah. she really talked about how, like, when she was younger, she didn't even know she could do this because she had never seen it anywhere. They didn't give women's sports enough, like, news footage. They mm -hmm. didn't give us enough time. So how would she know she was capable? Yeah. And it's like, that is so <clears throat> true. If we don't see if I didn't see Kim Walford lifting, would I think that I was capable of lifting? No, like Kim has done so much for the Jamaican organization yeah. and her um, award today was so deserving because she's somebody who, as I said, she's always bringing people up with her. Like she's fine to be on the podium, but she also wants to bring up her people. She also wants other people to succeed. And I think that's what makes her so successful as well. Yeah, she's amazing. She's inspired yeah. so many people. You, I mean. So many women have mentioned her, um, even men, like she was one of the first lifters that I ever saw and was yeah. inspired by her as well. So it's really cool that you had mentioned her. Um, we try to get her to come into this, uh, but obviously she's busy. She's, she's doing busy. so many things and everything like that. But um, um, I'm just grateful that you mentioned her as well, because there is always someone who like went first and did something. And she definitely was, was a real pioneer and a trailblazer. Yeah. But for Jamaica, it's you and it Scott, <laughs> um, and you're, you're blazing an amazing trail. And there's gonna be a lot of people following behind you. You're inspiring a whole nation and you're inspiring all of us as well. So. Oh, thank you. All right. I always appreciate your support. Of course. I always do. So I yeah. will you guys to it. Yes, yeah, give me a hug. <laughs> and then um, we'll bring up another trailblazer here in Khaled, but good luck out there. Thank you. Um, of, course, of course, we're rooting for Claire, but we're rooting you for you. Root. Too. We're rooting for you, you too. Root for whoever you want on camera, but I know behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Every lifter is my favorite lifter, so. All right. We got our last guest here. Last but not least, we got Khaled Usher. And Khaled, am I, am I uh, pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. I am. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, good. Okay. I can see you're going to be quiet, so I'm going to move this mic over a little bit closer <laughs> towards you. I'm sorry for making you wait. I know you're almost falling asleep over here. you got a lot of stuff to do. You're a coach. You're actually the president of the Belize Powerlifting Federation. 
Yeah. And are you the youngest president in the IPF? How old are you? I'm 25. So are you the youngest yeah. president in the IPF? I have no idea, but I'll take the title. I think you are. I think we'll give you the honorary title of being the youngest president, the youngest head honcho of any powerlifting federation. So how did you get started in powerlifting in Belize? And how did you become the president of the Belize? Do you call it the Belize part or Belizean powerlifting federation? Belize powerlifting association. Okay, powerlifting association. Uh, um, we started, we started it in university, me and a bunch of my friends, um, Ryan Budosher, he also has a deadlift record, he still has a deadlift record for NAPF, mm -hmm. um, for his class, um, um, my girlfriend right now, Ashley McFadzen, and my friend Mal, my next friend Kevin Ake, um, we basically were bored college kids, um, we were in the, we started the gym, uh, we like, we found out we like lifting things very heavy, mm -hmm. <laughs> like lifting heavy things. Um, and was there a combo rack? Was there a power rack? Do you no, have barbells? I think, um, no. Um, it's just like a regular old um, power rack, some like really bad barbells, some mm -hmm. plates. Um, we like lifting things heavy. Um, we heard about power lifting somehow because we did, we, did, we did our research, YouTube pops up, um, and we found, a, we found a competition in Chalama in Mexico it was really close and we went there wow. and, we, and uh, we competed there and we had a good time. And then we started to get like, more into it. I think the one thing that really inspired me to start powerlifting was in 2017. The, I remember the moment, the Ireland Grand Prix, when David Ricks broke that spot record in the 60s. That was amazing. Wow. I like, see something like that. Like, um, I, was never athletic. I was never an athletic person. Um, I started lifting weights because I broke two of my hands in a motorcycle accident. I felt really weak coming out of the class, and so I wanted to get stronger. So seeing someone in your, in your 60s being strong, having that longevity in the sport really meant a lot to me, and that really inspired me to keep it pushing. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, you, we've now mentioned Kimberly Walford, David Ricks. I mean, these are two of the absolute most legendary figures in all powerlifting. Um, so that's the first person that you saw. Uh, who were you following on YouTube and stuff whenever you said you first kind of got in and then you went and jumped in that meet in Mexico? Who was following on YouTube? Um, probably um, Calgary Barbell, right? Calgary Barbell? Oh, wow. Um, so he'll be here this week from Canada. He'll be here. Yeah. Um, I caught Russ's early videos okay. on YouTube. The early Duhan era? Yeah. yeah. Um, before I was just Alan Troll, um, yeah. Omar Issa, through them. I was like researching like programs. Um, that's why I found out about, about Mike Tashira. Wow. Um, reactive training system. That was like my niche. I started to figure out how to like well, I'm training myself on like you know T Nation has like the list of free yeah. <laughs> lift that net yeah. list of free programs. I tried them all the um one for um the five by fives. I tried the I even I really like small up. I wow. even tried small up. I've tried so many like free programs and just try to figure out how to get it on get it on, done on my own. Mm -hmm. I like really bring that to um, the, um, the country. Now even right now I'm still self trained, so Yeah. So Tell us then, you you started lifting, you started, you jumped in that competition. When did you, when was the Belize Powerlifting Association founded? It was founded in 2018. We founded it because, again, we were just um, kids um, in university who wanted to lift things. Um, after that competition to the mall, the guys there were really excited to have us and they invited us to Mexico City to for Mexican Nationals. Okay. Um, we went to Mexico City and we competed and we had a really good time just to find out that at the end of the competition we weren't eligible for any medals because we're not Mexican. You were guest lifting. We were guest lifting, but we, we didn't have any like grasp of that at the time. So it was kind of disappointing to do all the work, make it there and um, really come back and nothing. So from that moment we decided that we're going to make this our own thing in the country. It's not here in the country. Um, we're going to figure it out. Um, I was, I think I was 18, wow. 18 at the time. Oh my God. And, um, I figured out the emails. I registered it in my country. Um, and what was that? Who, who did you, who did you contact? Did you contact Robert Keller? Robert Keller. Yeah. Robert Keller. Yeah. yeah. That was, he was like the first like person I emailed. I was like, Hey, we're new to, wow. like, I'm a kid. <laughs> Please help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so then you founded the Belize Powerlifting Association. Then we founded the Belize Powerlifting Association. And then tell us, so when you first started it, how many members did you have? And then how many members do you have now? Well, it was when you first started, it wasn't even like a members thing. We first started the Belize Powerlifting Association just because we wanted to compete. Um, it wasn't like, a, oh, we want to like, we didn't really think what it was like building it or anything. Like that. It was just like, um, we're, we want to compete. So um, we used it as an avenue to like, um, to build it. And we started to realize like, hey, 
there's other people like us in the country that really like being yeah. strong. We started to reach out. Um, our first international competition was in APF in 2018, uh, where we took, um, it was three of us competed in Mexico City. It was um, me, Ryan, and Caleb. Okay. Um, we came back with medals that year. It was really exciting. Uh, we were preparing for the other ones, but then um, we had some setbacks, and then COVID hit, and we, we came back in, um, in 2022 and in Panama. Yeah, that's where we met. That's where we met. Yeah, man. That's where we hit it off in Panama. And um, I, we learned all about the Belize Poverty and Association. And just like, I always tell people, I'm like, there's this young kid. I mean, because honestly, when people, I don't know what people can see on camera, but he doesn't look like a day over 16 years old right now. <laughs> honestly, if he wasn't so big and jacked, like you would assume he might be like 18, maybe 20, something like this. But you're kind of an OG in the game now. Yeah. Um, You've been I've doing it for a minute. Been doing it for a minute. Um, we're getting to know all the people in the sport. Um, Again, in, in like 2020, when we had our first national competition, Kimberly Wolfer actually flew down to help us um, do it. Yeah. And well deserved award from by Kimberly Wolfer. Yeah. Um, what, she, what award did she win? Go ahead and mention it. Um, she won the, what was it, the Fair Sport Award, Fair Play Award. Fair Play Award today at the, at award. the General Assembly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very well deserved. Again, she's been a partner. She's been the backbone to many of the new federations in Central America and the Caribbean. She's been here pushing us. Yeah. Um. She's all. She's always when we see her. She's always very excited to see that we're bringing people here yeah. to these kinds of competitions because it's needed. Um. The infrastructure to build. Um. For I think Central America and the Caribbean. Yeah. It's needed. Um. I believe we're up next. Um, yeah. Europeans. The same way like France was up and coming, and now they're there. Mm -hmm. um, the same way um, New Zealand is doing it now. Yeah, I think someone Central America and Caribbean is up next. Um, Jamaica is a really strong team. Our team is getting stronger every year. The same thing goes for places like Costa Rica, for places like Panama. The sport is new in these countries. So yeah, it's giving it's giving us a lot of time to develop it here. Yeah, yeah. Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico are really strong. Yeah, Mexico is really, really strong. strong. Right. I mean, so definitely um, Central America, North America, outside of the uh, US and Canada are huge. But I'm just glad, again, another person mentioning, again, like you mentioned Dave Riggs, you mentioned Kimberly Walford. I mean, Kimberly Walford did huge things for the US team, um, you know, during yeah. the one year, yeah. whenever yeah. US lifters were able to yeah. go and compete. She's always there willing to help. Yeah, she's always there. She's always there. She's one of the best in the sport for sure. So tell us, what does the North American Power Team Championships, like, what does it mean? to countries like what does it mean to you and to belize and to countries that are in a similar position man um to me it just means it gives a, it gives us the opportunity to be out there to be recognized for something um a lot of the people on my team are putting a lot of sacrifice being here um we give them the opportunity to put nominations the association helps where it can we pay for it and they do think we pay for a participation fee but that's about as much as we can do to help help with the people and after that they they did their best to figure it out and they were doing barbecue sales, they were doing turkey dinner sales, they were doing um raffles, they were doing so many things to get here. Um just to compete, just for the representation, right? So again, I know it's the same for a lot of other countries in Central America and the Caribbean. It's very important for us. Um a lot of people don't have that avenue to express their interest in the sport they like. Um, some people just like lifting things heavy and to give them that opportunity it means a lot to them. So then was was that part of what went into your decision to bid to yes. host the North American Championships? Yes. Which, by the way, congratulations because Belize today, by one vote <laughs> over Dominican Republic, Laura uh, in the Dominican Republic, uh, Belize won the bid to host, what year will it be? 2026. 2026 North American Championships. So the North American Championships will go from the Cayman Islands to Scottsdale, Arizona. to Jamaica. Kingston, Jamaica, and then where in Belize? Placencia, Belize. Placencia, Belize. Can you imagine <laughs> when you started this, did you think that you would be hosting the North American Championships Definitely. in 2026? Come on, come on. That's the, that's that like was the goal? That was the goal. That was always the goal. Okay, that's okay. The goal is to eventually host Worlds. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Shoot for the stars. Yeah, again, um, from when I when we started this thing, and like we realized how big it could be, divisions started popping up. It's always been like a thought in the back of my head, like one day we need to make a bid. We actually wanted to make a bid from last year, but they told me like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> we went ahead of it this year, and unfortunately we won. Um, 
But from the beginning of the build, like um, Laura was here earlier. Yeah. Um, Laura was literally holding hands with Jacqueline when they were making the decision. Like at the end of the day, because the atmosphere for any faith is different from most of any other competition. Like we're all friends here. Yeah. Um, Laura, I met her last year, and like immediately we hit, we hit it off with the DR team. Yeah. Um, either way, whoever would have won that, like, would have been really exciting for us. It's a chance to. It would have been a chance to either be there or be at home. So it would have been good with us. So what was the case that you made that was so convincing that won it? Well, give us a pit, give us a little bit of like the elevator pitch of why Belize should be hosting the North American Powerlifting Championships. All right, Belize should be hosting for the Powerlifting Championship because Belize, the country, is amazing. I live in an amazing place. It has great food. It has amazing culture. Um, the, the destinations and what you can do in the country is also amazing. Um, just on the tourist end of thing, I know a lot of people who come to these competitions use it as an opportunity to get out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they use it as an opportunity to get out. This is a lot of people like, who compete in this sport. This is their, also on their vacation. Yeah. Right. So you have to tie that into because people also want to enjoy themselves in different ways, right? Yeah. Um, Belize has the second largest bar reef in the world. Wow. Um, we host many cultures, we we're multicultural, we're in Central America, we're considered part of Central America and the Caribbean, so we, we speak English and Spanish. Okay. Um, we have a thriving indigenous community with Garifuna people, um, Maya people, uh, we preserve the Maya monuments in our country, that's also a big thing. We can actually, unlike the other countries around us, you can actually climb the Maya monuments in Belize, so you can take a picture on top of them. Wow. Um, I haven't been to any of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, the food is great. The people are great. The food. Yeah. This segment sponsored by Mary Sharp's hot sauce. You, they brought they brought this in their bag. You know, Beyonce is like, I got hot sauce in my bag. They I told them that Mary Sharp's was my favorite hot sauce when I went to Belize. They have this everywhere. It's like ketchup on every table. Yeah. And uh, they whipped this out and gave it to me. So this segment is. Sponsored by Mary Sharps. We gotta get Mary Sharps to sponsor the North American Powerlifting Championships yeah, 2026. Two things in Belize. If you ask for pepper, they give you Mary Sharp. If you ask for beer, they give you the Belican. Yeah, yeah, Belican. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two, oh, no, the two things in Belize. Right? We gotta get those as your two biggest sponsors. And everything, everything is good. Um, but again, like, Belize is an amazing country, and it also gives the people at home opportunity. Um, our population is just three hundred thousand. Yeah. Right. Um, we don't have where the sports in Belize is developing. And we're pushing it in a way where we're trying to do, look at different avenues to express sport in the country. Um, honestly, if we get this opportunity to host this thing, this would be the biggest competition that Belize has seen. I can't even tell from since when. Right? In, in all sports? In all sports. Wow. Um, wow. Usually we have like regional competition, but we've never had like a true regional competition. Usually like we have an invitation to like a, like a four or five countries, but this is North America. Yeah. This is everyone, including Central America and the Caribbean. This yeah. is a huge deal for us. Yeah. I mean, um, we're talking 14 countries. Yep. And it yeah. could be more too, because be we more. see some more countries coming into the fold yeah, as I heard, well. Um, um, about El Salvador, I yeah. about Honduras. And again, Belize is right here with them. It gives a lot of people the opportunity to, it's easy access to a lot of these countries. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's El Salvador, it's just like a plane right away. They can even catch the boat if they want to, from yeah. San Pedro Sula and Honduras to Belize. Yeah. Uh, it's easy for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it's with Mexico as well. Yeah. Uh, very easy to get to. Very easy to get to. Well, that's a great pitch. No wonder you won. <laughs> uh, no wonder. I've been to Belize. I was lucky enough to go there. Like I said, I got addicted to Mary Sharp, so I'm ordering it on Amazon all the time. It's the best hot sauce, definitely. Uh, there's other things to go to Belize for as well, besides yeah. just the food and beer. <laughs> but Julia, what other questions do you have? you have any follow-up questions about that? or? Yeah, so um, you mentioned France and you, you mentioned uh, some other countries that are coming up in the powerlifting world. Uh, did you look at any of these countries uh, and their their process towards making powerlifting bigger there? And did you take anything from them? And if so, um, which ones and who do you look up to as far as that kind of stuff? I look up to, there's, I feel like every country approaches powerlifting their own way. Um, everyone builds it up in like, because everyone, every country has their own culture and the way, and the way like they express, um, the way they develop their own sport. So it's something to take away from everyone. Um, I really like the way social media has played a hand in it. Um, a lot of people are very, are engaging. And it's just, again, our country, we also have like, we still get the questions like, um, are you a bodybuilder? Are you a, um, 
the people uh, for some reason people in the country are very aware of olympic weightlifting i didn't even <laughs> yeah i wasn't even like aware of how many people in the country like knew about that before like it shows from- it shows the importance of being in the olympics yeah if you're in the olympics everyone knows whether whether yeah, they care about it or not they yeah. know of it at least yeah but definitely um it's a big inspiration especially to see how um like um how certain countries like shoulder some of the things they have to go through like trinidad trinidad has been on hiatus since 2018 and through that entire time they managed to maintain interest in the sport right until they made it back this year so things like that you have to like look and see like what what are they doing like are they the community is very important right um as long as you can build community then the cricket sport can grow um Again, like I'm really excited. Like last year, we had eight people in an NAPF. This year, we have eighteen. Wow! Nice. So that's really you over double the size. Over double the size. Wow, that is amazing, man. No wonder you, you won. So proud. <laughs> yeah. You should be so proud of that, man. And, and everyone else that has worked hard for that. They're working so hard. I'm very proud of my team. Yeah. So tell us a little bit then about the Belize squad that you have here. Who were some of the athletes that, like, you, you're talking to Power in America, you're talking to a lot of the American audience now. And I always tell people about Belize. Like, when I always talk about Laura, I talk about you, I uh, talk about Jamaica, you know, like, there's these teams out there yeah. that a lot of Americans, they don't they don't even know that Belize has a Power Team Federation or that they have yeah. a team. So who are some of the athletes that the American audience should go out and follow, like, on Instagram, like, right now, besides sturdy leg he's got the easiest instagram handle right here <laughs> go follow Khaled, sturdy leg but who were some of the stars or who are some of the up and coming stars that we should be looking out for in the next few years i think who should be looking at this competition yeah. is i would consider him our strongest lifter um kalem kalem godoy he's our 120 lifter and you mentioned him in, in part of king of america as one well, a contender in the 120 class yeah um, he was in south africa um, last year, mm-hmm. um, the year before, so, yeah, last year, sorry, um, he competed, it was his first, like, real international competition back at it. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't go the way he wanted, but his potential is up there. Um, so, so for people who want to watch that, that, I, I'm going to pull up the, the schedule right here. That'll be on Friday yeah. at 7 p.m. I know, his uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. His goal and what his dream is right now is to bring hype to that 120 class. Wait. It's very much needed. I know um, um, Tony Cliff, at, Tony Cliff at the World Championships. Tony Cliff at the World Championships, he's making a big breakaway yeah. from everyone in the world. Same Dennis, with, Dennis Cornelius Dennis, obviously yeah. owned that class for so long. But they're making it, exciting. They're making it so much more exciting again. Um, yeah. Um, again, and then in the right Singh wrote the deadlift record. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Tashir is back after seven years. Um, Tristan Nizarud so, is here. It's it's. I I generally feel as if this one twenty first NAPF yeah. is going to be the most exciting class. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. it's going to be exciting. And you mentioned that one of the first inspirations that you had when you were watching on YouTube was Calgary Barbell. Yep. Bryce Krawcheck is a one twenty. Yep. Tristan Nizarud is the one twenty kilo national champ from the U.S. Mike T was the runner up and he said he's never been happier to get that silver medal in Austin earlier this year. And then we got Kalen from the small country of Belize yeah. coming in here and hanging <laughs> with, with the U.S. two big Americans and a big Canadian. And nobody, you know, they, they know we went to South Africa. They know we talked about him and everything. I think his Instagram handle was like KG. Yeah, KG Lifts. KG Lifts, right? Yep. KG Lifts. Um, and so... Um, that's one person that definitely everyone should go out there and follow. And who are some of the, and that's going to be, I mean, if people thought that the battle between Tristan Nazelrod and Mike T and Enrique Lugo at our nationals in Austin was huge. Now we're going to run it back. Mike T's even stronger. Yeah. He's even better. He's even further along on his comeback. Tristan's done nothing but add to his total. And he's been just waiting there in the wings because he didn't go to Worlds or anything like that. And then obviously Bryce Krawcheck also didn't go to Worlds. So yeah. he's been building. And then here's Kalen who no, hardly anybody knows about, except for if they're listening to the Power Team America podcast, we've been saying his name over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, 
was so excited because now instead of a three-way battle like we had it for our audience in nationals, the four-way. we got a four-way battle. We got all different countries in the mix. So I'm, I couldn't be more excited for that one. But who are some other one athletes that we should be looking out for besides so, yourself? Besides myself, yeah, um, obviously, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have, we have a lot of we have a lot of it open competitors. I'm really excited for my sub junior team, my sub junior woman, <laughs> uh, my sub junior girls. We have four girls competing in the sub junior class. All okay. of them are 15. Um, all their parents agreed to help them here. Wow. <laughs> so that's also really that's, exciting. That's huge for the sport. I mean, I think when you look at um, like like a country, that I think that everyone agrees is has just blown up with powerlifting has been France. Yeah. And I think if you, I think I remember watching if they were saying when you looked at their sub juniors and their juniors a few years ago, yeah. you saw some of these lifters coming up like Turbo Tiff and some yeah. of these athletes coming up like Ja Jacob. Um, and even on the men's side, they have some very strong juniors now that we've seen that have, you know, uh, made it up into the open that one, they had two win the world championship last year as juniors at junior worlds. They beat our guys <laughs> in heartbreaking losses, um, but they're moved up into the open now. So, I mean, that's a really cool sign to see that you have a really strong set of sub juniors on the women's side because the women's side is getting strong now. You also have a really strong masters lifter yeah, on the um, women's side. We have a uh, master lifter, we have three. Okay. But uh, I think who we are we are talking about is Alita Sharp. Yeah, Alita Sharp. Alita Sharp. Yeah. She's Any relation to, yeah. to Mary? No, no relation. No relation? Oh. <laughs> but um, last year, she last year she broke some of the North American records. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, for her class, um, she went to Worlds, tried it, tried it out there, and then she's back again this year. I'm, doing, I'm going at it again. Um, again, it's the same, same business as usual. She tried to break records. Mm -hmm. um, she's recently in her 60s. She has a March baby. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so she's new to the um, Master Street class. She's in the M3s now. Yep, she's in the M3s now. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to look up and see who, who do we have that she. Oh, she's going against herself. Yep. So she's going to go be breaking records. Yep. Okay, yeah, but, records. So is she involved in the sport in, in Belize? Yeah, she's very involved. Again, um, Miss Alita is an inspiration for a lot of people here. Um, mm -hmm. um, actually, on our team, and I'm really proud of this. Turkey, you know, the 18 people we brought are women. Wow. Nice. Right? Wow. So, majority of our team are women. And she's only um, one of the driving influences in that. Everyone looks at her. With, I always like, I'm not like parade her. She's not a mascot or anything like that. <laughs> but yeah. whatever we're like. <laughs> she's like a spoke. She's like an ambassador. Though, yeah, she's like an Belize. ambassador. If she has a presence. Like, I thought she was the president <laughs> whenever I met her. And I was like, oh, you're the president? And then another guy was asking me, like, I wanted you to talk to our president. Oh, I asked her, I met her. So that's not the president. This guy's a fool. <laughs> but, yeah, she, she's a really cool lady. Yeah, she's a really cool lady. Um, again, I love people for her, look to her as inspiration because she everyone has a story. Her story is that she just wanted to get fit, right? She just decided one day to join a, um, a, a, a gym. Mm -hmm. um, Kaylin trains her. Mm -hmm. um, she just wanted to feel good. Um, by feel good, she said she realized she liked being strong. Um, by being strong, she realized um, I like being buff. <laughs> yeah. So she kind of like feels all the you'll, you'll see her tomorrow. She's in the first session. Uh, you see her on the screen. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, she's intense. She's she's awesome. And now, what's her best lift? Is it a deadlift? I she's can't a deadlifter. Say that, Paul. <laughs> no, no, I mean like not her numbers, but. But like, like she's a, a little bit of a deadlift no, specialist. Um, honestly, she's an all rounder. She is okay. She's an all rounder. Okay, cool. So look, watch out for her in the fifty twos. She'll be up lifting up tomorrow morning at ten a.m. Yep. Eastern time, ten a.m. Eastern time in the first flight. Uh, was gonna. There's some legends in that. Susie Gary is in there. So yeah, so that's that's gonna yeah, be we an have, exciting. We have a lot of people. We have five girls and two guys lifting tomorrow. Okay. Great. So if you're out there listening, make sure you get the live stream. We'll be posting it in our Instagram stories. Belize Powerlifting Federation will be posting it in yours. What's your What's a Belize Instagram handle? Uh, Belize Powerlifting Association. And uh, uh, is, that's the full handle? The yeah, full handle. Okay. Is it? I think it's just Belize Power. Belize yeah, Power. yeah. It's Belize Powerlifting. Yeah, Belize Power. Belize, it's actually Belize Powerlifting. Yeah. So yeah, so um, we tag them in the story for this. So if you're out there, you're listening to this, go follow all these countries. Yep. We tagged, I mean, uh, people, everyone knows CPU, we tagged that, but, um, you know, go follow the Jamaican Federation, go follow the Belize Federation. The more followers they get, the more that they can get sponsors like Mary Sharp <laughs> you know, to come on board, Billiken to come on board. They're two of their big companies that they have in Belize. 
And so, yeah, support them when they make posts, like them, repost them, all that kind of stuff. Um, Julie, do you have any other follow-up questions for our 16-year-old friend here? <laughs> I mean, 25-year-old friend. So who is your favorite American, powerlifting America athlete? And I don't know if you want to even say, like, your favorite performance from our squad uh, at the World Championships this year. Because you're at 93, right? Yeah, on that tree. Yeah. That, but that's so hard. That's, that's a, su such a tough question. To, yeah. I think I, my inspiration mostly are like the older guys, like the guys who are like the legends in it. Um, so I have to say Harry Williams. You're going to get to meet him. I got to meet him. You're going to get to but meet him. I, I, you can't overlook the pioneers of the sport. The other people that really inspired me. So as much as I really like Keiko, as much as I like yeah. Gavin and like every other person, mm -hmm. like. Ray Williams was the guy. He's the first person to squat a thousand pounds. You can never take that away from him. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, he's amazing. Uh, amazing. I can't wait for you to, to meet him. Uh, we gotta go over to Peppers and have dinner, <laughs> so you can watch Ray Williams smash like ten pounds of barbecue or something, whatever it is, uh, and have a blast. I mean, and then I remember you, you showed up for this like an hour before we started this, which now, I mean, we're going on like, I don't even yeah. know what we're at. We're at two and, a, two and a half hours. So you've been here sitting in here for three and a half hours. No, but I've been listening to everyone. It's, and, again, I'm a part of the nerd, so. And, and right when I walked in, I said, I was like, you know, you don't have to hang out this whole time. You come back later. We got you scheduled for a little bit later. And you, what did you say? I want to meet Lane Norton. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's what's so cool about these North American Pop Team Championships is that it's, it's not like worlds where it's, because uh, at Worlds this year, it was almost overwhelming. There's so many people yeah. that you just like, like you, you, even me, who's very social, you just feel like you can't possibly talk to everybody. Yeah. But at this meet, at the North American Power Championships, it's such a family, so close-knit, so much more personal. Like we get already got to spend time. We're, we're all only here. We're not even on day one yet. Yeah. We already got to spend, you know, eat a meal together and things like this. And then same thing with like, Lane will be here, and like now Leah's here. We saw, I mean, like, imagine all these ladies are gonna get to just hang out with Leah, like, up close and personal. Like, I'm already feeling a little bit more stimulated. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, earlier, I was like, especially after the bail, I was like, so I started running to like the training, the training hall. I saw the Jamaican team, I had to go and like say hi. Yeah, I saw Laura, I saw everyone. I was like, man, like, I just sat down and I was, was like white for like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, it, it is overwhelming. And besides uh, Ray Williams, what other what other athletes are you looking uh, to are you looking forward to seeing their performances at this meet? Or what other are there any other weight class battles besides the one twenty is that you're looking forward to? Anything like that? Who I'm looking forward to for this one is the seventy six battle. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Those ladies, Christine Castro, players. I I think and that one will be really exciting. To see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, that's going to be one of the best for sure. Um, we just talked about it with with Lane Norton, um, and that weight class two is going to be amazing. But um, yeah, we're just looking to see where else, where else. What are? Give me one more lifter from Belize that people need to be paying attention to that they need to have on their radar. So I don't know if you remember the story that Ryan Labadat tells about Worlds. I think it was like 2019 in Sweden when Panna came up to him and was like, "Let me introduce you to Leah and <laughs> Tiffany Chapone." Or uh, um, who was it um, that he mentioned? Uh, I don't think it was Tiff, but maybe it was Tiff. Uh, and he's like, these ones are going to be world champions in the future. Who are those people for that we need to be watching out for in the future for from Belize? Give us one more you name. Give me, you can't just say one more name. That's the case. <laughs> give me one more. Give me two more. That's fine. Well, um, again, he's right in front of me. Um, <laughs> Tura, he's been one of the top lifters in Belize for a while now. Uh -huh. um, every year, all my athletes have been improving on your total, and he's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Are you coaching him? You can you can speak up. What is? He's added eighty kilos to his total. Wow, that's, that's a lot. amazing, man. Yeah. So yeah, Leo's sitting right here in front of us. He's also one of the nicest guys in the sport. Um, he's also a pretty young lifter as well, like yourself. So, oh, 1990, 1990. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong Robert one. I thought I said 1999. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. But he's still making progress in his 30s. He's still making 
progress. Um, again, yeah. I have, I have. To, if I list one, I have to list all because all of them are improving so well. Drop some names for us. My um, so junior fifteen year old team. I have Ariana, I'm Matua Shepherd. I have Kaylee Burgess. I have Riesa, and I have Amrit Batman. Y'all be, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing them, you'll be seeing them. If you're listening tomorrow. Yep. Wow, and he's up here hanging out with us until well, he'll be the afternoon. Okay, okay. Be fine. okay, good. And then um, on the men's side, uh, I have to give, I have to give a special shout out to two people. Um, um, one of the guys, Kyle Ali, and also Eric Sanabria. Um, their improvement has been phenomenal, man. Um, as Eric will be lifting uh, tomorrow also. Mm-hmm. Um, in that in that um men's session. Okay. But, like his improvement has been amazing since he started. Cool. So we got a, a couple of uh, men on the Belize side, also a couple of sub juniors and stuff that will be lifting tomorrow. We got masters lifters. Belize is filling out all the different weight classes, yeah. the age groups, everything. So Belize will be all over the live stream tomorrow. Starts at 10 a.m. We'll be posting the links everywhere. If you're following Belize powerlifting, then you'll get it there. If you're following powerlifting underscore America, you'll get it there. We'll be posting the live streams, but Khaled, Congratulations again, man. Oh, you're you. one of the best guys, one of the young, youngest honchos in the sport here. And uh, congrats on winning the bid yeah, to right. host, man. You're going to be 27 years old for hosting <laughs> the North American Powerlifting Championships, man. Oh, man I'll, get, I'll get gray hairs early. That's got to be an inspiration. That's got to be an inspiration for more. I mean, you see it in a lot of other countries where a lot of young people yep. are very involved in the very sport. Um, in the U.S., you know, in all our federations, we don't have that as much, you know. We don't have as many young people getting getting on, on board. So, like when I and saw so, last year in Panama, I, I was in the big AGM meeting room and people were looking at me confused. And then yeah. I saw Laura and she turned around, looked at me, and she was like, uh, "We were like really excited to see each other because I was like, yeah. oh, my, oh my god, you have like a full set of hair.'" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's that's amazing. That's why I was saying. I mean, I thought Alita was was the president because you just kind of assume it's the older generation that has been the leaders and stuff. But in, we're seeing across the Caribbean, across all the North American countries outside of the, the U.S. and Canada and stuff, that it's the youth that yep. are leading. And we saw that in France, too. So yep. I think I think the Caribbean, Central America is going to be on the come up, like you said. Definitely. And uh, with all this youth movement out here, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's a matter of time. We just need, a, we just need to keep developing the sport in the region. Yeah. Um, in the next two or three years, actually, I can see it sooner than that because again, some already, some already gave you yeah. what she, her spiritual perspective on it. Like she's yeah. like coming seventh again. Yeah. So it's so, sooner than you think. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I can't wait to go to the world championships in a few years, and we're all there. And we're all all there. the people that were on this episode, all the people in this country that are at this competition, all the countries that you see here represented on the world stage. And this is where it starts is at the North American Power Championships. That's why this is such an important competition. Yeah. Not just about the US and Canada, but it's about all these other countries and building them up and being stronger as a region. So we can kick Europe's ass and kick Asia's <laughs> exactly. ass, right? Exactly. That's what's really important. That's what's really important. <laughs> we gotta kick their ass. All right. Good. <laughs> Julian finally chimed in with a good one there. <laughs> but all right. All right, homie. We'll let you go. Um, go to bed. Go relax. I know you got a big week ahead of you, man. Yeah. And congratulations again, man. Thank you. Really happy for you. Yeah. And you're a big inspiration yeah. for us, too. Yeah. So, great. All right, pop up on out of here. All right. All right. All right. And you guys get out of here, go to bed, and rest and relax. All right, we got one last thing that we're going to talk about. Yep. Thank you so much, Belize Powerlifting. We got one more thing that we're going to talk about here, and then we're going to turn this off for the day. It's been a hell of a long episode of Monday Night Live with the Powerlifting America podcast crew coming to you from the Cayman Islands Mm -hmm. and showcasing one of the really important competitions, the North American Powerlifting Championships, and just the camaraderie and all the cool people. All these are people, all the people that have been on this episode tonight are people that I just met them last year at this meet at the North American Powerlifting Championships. And it's such a, such a fun meet. It's such, I always say it's my favorite meet. And it's for, for this reason, because of the community that we have, the friendships that we make, um, we hang out all week, we become friends, we become family. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's just an amazing competition. So we want to see all these countries grow the sport and we want to see, you know, North America, Central America and Caribbean become dominant. So, all right. So the last thing that I want to mention before we do have some really big breaking news 
we teased it at the beginning two and a half or three hours ago. So if you're still listening, you might have to uh, catch the replay for this part. But um, the big breaking news, I actually have to scroll to the bottom of my notes so I don't mess this up. Julia, can you guess what it is? Because you told me today that there's been no news in powerlifting this week other than Waskar, you know, hitting hitting sets of four to get his 600-pound double. But... All right, I'll just I I'll get right to is it. it. Is it the uh, is it the universities? Is it the universities? She's saying no, it is not. But actually, yes, there's some tie-in with the universities. The breaking news that we just found out today that I myself did not know until today was that Power Powerlifting America Open Classic Nationals in 2024 will be in Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. and it will be March 14, 15, and 16. And I believe there's an option if if there's a lot of people that show up that they could it could possibly start on March 13th, and that University Nationals will also be tied in on the 17th at the same venue. And uh, talking to Tamara Lopes, she's our amazing treasurer, and she's also one of the assistant coaches on our world's team in Malta. Here, Romania, she'll be there. She'll be in Mongolia. Um, she's one of the superstars of our squad. She got apparently just a drop dead gorgeous venue, a huge venue. It's a venue that has hosted the weightlifting world championships. So we're going to be having a venue that's good enough for world championships for our national championships. And we're going to tie that in with university nationals as well. So the university athletes will get to come out and see all the stars in the open classic division. And then they'll get to go and have their spotlight and we'll have the same setup. We'll have our press conferences. We'll have all the media coverage. Everything will be exactly the same for those university athletes. And then also those university athletes next year, is this what you were hinting at? Yes. So tell us about it. Oh, I, I was just um, asking about it because I'm not quite sure, but um, it says that, the FISU University World Championships Cup is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, so that that University Nationals and Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, will be the one that will that will qualify university athletes for the FISU World University World Championships. Wow. Um, and this will be the first time I believe that the that the IPF has had FISU in the World Championships. If you don't know what that is, go back and listen to Monday Night Live last week. We had Robert Keller on. He was talking about it. What the difference is, is that in the IPF has the IPF University World Cup that will be every other year. And then now every other year will be the FISU University World Championships. And the benefit of that is, is that it directly involves the universities. So the universities themselves will be nominating the athletes. They'll have to be Power of the American members if they're coming out of the U.S. They'll have to be IPF members, uh, federate member. Uh, members of an IPF federation, whatever country they're coming from, but it's a huge deal. And one of the reasons that was that, you know, we're unable to be able to get involved in something like this um, is because of how we do our drug testing with being water yeah. compliant through USADA and stuff because the universities, they all work with USADA and things like this. So it's a big deal um, because it's getting powerlifting to be recognized as a university level sport in the U S which if you know, in the U S university athletics are massive. Everybody knows about college football, college basketball. You know, we're talking about um, the big dance, you know, uh, March Madness. We're talking about the NCAA, now the playoffs and the bowl series, all the different bowl games in, in football. Volleyball is huge. It's just a massive thing for Power Thing to be in that. And so now you know if you're in the university, if you're in that university age group, mark it on your calendar next year, March 17th. Um, in Reno, Nevada, and you can punch your ticket to the FISU University World Championships. Um, so that's really, really exciting. It's a really Very big cool. deal to have universities involved like this. And apparently the venue is just something that's going to be absolutely spectacular. So more on that to come in the future. But um, just wanted to get that out there first and foremost. Of course, you know, if you're following powerlifting underscore America on Instagram, we're going to make a post about this eventually with the dates and the logos and all that kind of stuff, make something that looks really cool. But that's what, that's what Monday night live. And that's what the power of the America podcast is for is for getting this breaking news out. They literally signed the contract like last night, like less than 24 hours ago. So we get that information out to you as soon as possible. Uh, we'll get it up on the website as soon as possible, but everybody can mark their calendars for March of next year. 
and that's huge. That's really, really big deal. Uh, but also, don't forget everything else that we've got going right now. Um, you can, if you're in the high school age group, <coughs> high school nationals is open. The link is below. The, they're running a logo contest where you can get a free entry, and you can work with our our creative team, our media team, to design the logo that will actually be on the backdrop at high school nationals. It'll be on the shirt and everything like that. You'll probably be working with me directly. So that's a huge bonus, obviously. Um, and we got some other things that we're going to give away a t-shirt. We're going to give away, um, a free entry for, for the, for whoever wins that, but we're going to do some other things. We'll probably have them on the podcast. We'll probably, you know, yeah. do some collab posts and things like this, get them some shine on social media. And then also don't forget that bench press nationals registration is also open. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, high school nationals, that will be April 19th and that will be in new Orleans. And again, it's a, it's a great venue. It's right by the airport. So it's like super convenient for high school age kids to get and their families. So you don't have to like rent a car and drive all across town and all this kind of stuff. Obviously new Orleans, a destination city. Um, and then we have bench press nationals registration is open for that as well. That's January 27th. That will be in Austin, Texas. And Austin, Texas is also where power of the America will be hosting its first world championships. And that'll be the bench press world championships on May 25th of next year. That's going to be a huge thing. Um, I know a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on with that, but there's going to be a vendor village. There's going to be a lot of th really cool things going on. It's Austin, Texas. Um, it's Austin in May. That's going to be beautiful. There's going to be all kinds of things going on. Tons of live music, tons of food. I'm hearing things about there's going to be special cowboy boots involved. There's going to be all kinds of crazy Texas stuff. So anyone out there around the world, that's tuning in for this because I know tonight we probably have a little bit more of an international audience. Put down May 25th. You're going to want to come to Austin, Texas for the Bench Press World Championships. Yeah, I mean, we had nationals there uh, this year and it was great. The Illico um, show. The Illico show. Barbecue. Yeah, they, you know, we all walked over to the Illico uh I, I don't know. Headquarters. What is it? Headquarters? The, the yeah, it's our headquarters. headquarters. Yeah. And they had a barbecue there. Um, the downtown is really cool. Lots of nice like bars and restaurants and everything it's it's a really cool spot to have a world championship and um yeah, yeah everyone you know it's accessible so <laughs> hope you all make it out there yeah the production is going to be huge you know it's ipf world championships um and so yeah aleko uh the, the ricard at aleko the smoking swede he has <laughs> on his smoker that he has now this massive custom built smoker for himself He's going to be smoking meat all week for us uh, because it's going to be a really big deal. Um, so it's going to be a ton of fun. So, yeah. So and then again, just the breaking news is that we have a date for classic open uh, national championships for Power of the America. And yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be in Reno, Nevada, and it's going to be March 14, 15 and 16. So mark your calendars, we tied in with University Nationals. So it's really huge news. Everyone's been wanting to know when it's going to be. And um, it just takes a long time to get these contracts, get these venues worked out and everything like that. So they finally, we got that one locked in. So they told us the contract signed. So we announced it here first on Monday Night Live. So tune in to Monday Night Live. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube account here. Um, make sure you're following the Power of the American podcast. You subscribe to it on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever it is. Give us high ratings. Um, follow us at Power of the Underscore America so you never miss a beat on anything we're doing. Any of these YouTubes and things, we will always post it here. Don't forget, we're at the North American Championships all week this week. We'll be doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff on our Instagram stories, so make sure and follow that. And then in another around two weeks from now, we're headed out to Romania. We're going to do it all over again with press conferences and everything at the IPF um, with, with a superstar team of juniors and sub juniors that are coming, coming for the world championship. So with that, uh, thank you to everyone that has joined us tonight. This is a really special episode. We're happy to have some of our friends from the other countries in the North American Powerlifting Federation. And um, thank you for everyone who tuned in. Thank you, Julia. And also don't forget, We'll leave you on, a, on a, a little bit of a tease. We don't know what the story with Mike Gold. He could be banned. Yeah. We're not, we don't know. So you'll have to tune in next time to see if Mike Gold reappears or not. And, <laughs> uh, and if you're following, if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you follow us on Monday Night Live, you'll get the scoop on that next week. So with that, it's been a, a great night. And um, we'll see you next time on Monday Night Live. Peace out. <laughs> Double deuces. <laughs>